enough. It's spring, spring cleaning. And you know what I realized, Matt Hamilton? Such a weird man. What's weird about that? Spring Things cleaning is like a thing. thing. Uh, yeah, but like, okay. So I just, I, this is my perspective on it. I was, uh-huh. I was quite busy today, so I yeah. didn't have the chance to talk to you a lot. Yeah. But I, I, I walked in at one point, mm-hmm. and I saw ah, you, you and you and Primetime here in the studio yeah. moving a bunch of stuff around. Yeah. What's wrong with that? And I walk in, and I'm like, what are you fellas doing? And you go, hey, man, I'm going to try something new today. Yeah. I'm going to try something new. Yeah. I'm going to sit in your seat. Well, You're going to sit seat, in Matt, my Matt. seat. This has never been your seat. Uh, it's, it's my Matt seat Hamilton's for Mr. Seat. Relevant. But it's, it's my Matt seat Hamilton's when I fill seat. in. Yeah, but, like. It's Matt Hamilton's. I use it more often than Matt Hamilton. It doesn't matter. Matt Hamilton, literally and figuratively, is bigger than you. <laughs> okay. So what does like, that have to do with who uses the seat ball? So, yeah. like, it's associated with Matt. Like, Matt Hamilton is the star. Matt Hamilton gets his seat. Apparently not anymore. No, I'm definitely. And by the way, you're the star of this program. Uh, He's got the star power name. Me. True. You're the uh, star of this I'm program. The, I'm the only the star because I'm the only one that turns uh, the light on every night. You're correct. So, correct. like, that's literally, I leave the light on for you. This is Rutledge and Hamilton. He's Alex Strove. Uh, we mix it up a little bit. Mainly, look, we're on YouTube. We're uh, we're not on Facebook anymore. Ryan is anti Zuckerberg, so we're just off Facebook. <laughs> uh, we're on Twitter. <laughs> and. We've we used to have some Coors Light boxes in the front, but those are no longer part of the shot as we want some tighter shots here. So we've moved some things around. We now have added some ESPN Madison uh, tumblers. You don't get one. And then uh, okay. I have we, one at home. I actually have it on my desk, I think. Well, then you can go bring it in. No, that's okay. And then behind you, we have for some of the wide shots, we have the ESPN Madison Let's Go Red Coors Light fridge full of Coors Light. So let's we wanted go. to put that a little bit well, more. The Wisconsin men's it, basketball team saying to one, one another, let's go. Yeah. Red. Uh, yeah, let's go, let's Red. Go. Yeah. Is that what they uh, call each other? Just nickname each other Red. Yeah. So th- we just wanted to mix it up a little bit. We moved our little lock. What do you call these? Little cubbies? We moved our cubbies. Cubbies, yeah. Uh, over underneath one of the TVs to block an ugly cord and create some more space. And uh, Molly Brown and Maddie Hayes are working on some behind the scenes things with social media. And they had a little social media corner over here now, so wow. we're maximizing the space. We're like Property Brothers, which apparently it. there's controversy Excuse with the me? Property the Property Brothers. What? I, I must have missed this. I, I don't. You're watch Mr. A lot Radio. Of... Radio. What? Radio. They're what? on TV. Well, it thought... was out on Sportsmanlike that yes. the controversy came from. What they did? Yes. Please share, or do you want me to share? I know a little bit about it. They were on on Sportsmanlike yesterday morning, right, Jim? Yes. So I uh, saw a picture of them with Evan Cohen, but that was that was all I saw. One yeah. of them is dating Zoe Deschanel. Oh. Okay. That's not necessarily here nor there, but it's worth noting. <laughs> yeah, just like when you watch Weekend hey Update on, on Saturday Night Live and Colin Jost comes on the screen, you're like, oh, Scarlett Johansson's husband. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's just worth <laughs> noting. Do you wonder, like, is he really funny or what's going on here? Well, he is really funny. He is funny, but, like, funny in real life. Like, that's scripted, and he does a good job delivering scripted f- comedy. I'm not saying he's not funny but otherwise. scripts scripted for him, so that's why it's funny. But, um... Yeah, I, I no, I honestly with Colin Jost, I don't really wonder what's going on. Okay, so I feel like he's he's kind of like me, handsome, skinny. He is funny. I, I don't think goofy. He, he's like I actually I think he's fit. You're skinny. He's fit. Okay, well same diff. It's not same diff. At least I'm not chubby. Uh, I don't know if you're chubby like um, and you're strong. That's good. It's true. There's a whole SNL skit about how. But I'm not how- strong. How women are tired of the skinny guys who can't lift them up, move them around, do all that kind of stuff. They're bringing Kelsey and the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Earlier this week, (laughs) the Property Brothers, Jonathan and Drew Scott, visited ESPN Seaport Studios for an appearance on Unsportsmanlike with Evan, Canty, and Michelle. But as it turns out, the Property Brothers may have left with some new property of their own. Unbeknownst to Paul, I don't know who this is. Hembokitis? Yes, that guy. Uh, Hembo. 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 Uh, During Thursday's episode of Greeny with Hembo, better known as Get Up, viewers and Greeny listened as Hembo revealed that he has been informed by his colleagues that one of the famous brothers had stolen his pair of scissors. The accusation came uh, the way of ESPN Radio content creator Rob Lorenzo, who handles the show, the show's social media accounts. After Unsportsmanlike, we were exiting the studio, and I walked out, and one of the property brothers looked at me and said, hey, do you have a pair of scissors on you? Lorenzo recalled. Naturally, Lorenzo, who wasn't carrying a pair of scissors on him, was ultimately able to produce a pair from Hembo's desk with the help of a coworker. Lorenzo assumed that the unnamed property brother in question would use the pair during a hit on another show at the studio, such as First Take or Greeny, and then had returned them. But that was not the case. So, property brothers stealing from uh, 
the ESPN studios. All right, I don't give a damn about that. Let's talk about the Badgers. All right, tough guy. Can't have any fun today. I mean, that, that, if that's fun, hey, what if are the we Titanic doing? is sinking, why can't we just try to laugh a little bit? Play the violin. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. We'll jump right into it. The Badgers are a dumpster fire. Badger <laughs> basketball Game. is in trouble. It is on its way to the bottom of the Big Ten, and I don't know if they have the right coaching staff to save it. They definitely don't have enough players to save it. That's true. I'm tired of the whining about. Uh, whether it's the officials in the James Madison game or today the complaints about uh, how decisions are made financially, this isn't new. This isn't like year one of the transfer portal or name and likeness. This is the way of college basketball, and the Badgers are getting bullied out of their players, and they're whining about it. And instead of whining about it, maybe they should go bully some uh, you know, mid-majors or Division two schools out of their players players that you know, Power 5 schools maybe missed on the first time. Mm-hmm. Go get those guys. Yeah, yeah. There's money available. Go beat up someone else. Instead, they're just sitting there, much like the James Madison game, crying with their smashed up milk in their hand. And their face full of dirt after getting smashed in the dirt. Kansas came in town and said, that's a nice player you got there. I'm going to take him. Unnamed school, probably from the state of Nebraska, came in and said, that's a nice point guard you got there. You think you're going to get a player out of Nebraska? No. We're going to take a player of yours to Nebraska. They basically got like... uh, the uh, inc- like the the uh, the book the uh, the pre- all the president's men deep throat like that the the mystery Whoa, spy that's a, that's a spy I had to set it up because I know the two of you me and don't Ryan know any history just... and that is the name Did you say that on the radio? that is the name of the spy in all the president's men the Richard Nixon the Dick Nixon story where he is. Uh, obviously outed for the what Watergate does that have tapes. To do with Chuck because that person Great is question. a spy. So uh, what's the kid name from uh, Omaha, Nebraska that came here? Frankie Fiddler. Frankie Fiddler is deep throat. He came here and took Chuck Chucky Hepburn from Wisconsin. The Badgers got scooped. They brought the Trojan horse into the house and they left with Chucky. He was from Omaha. He wasn't from USC, Jim. Come on. Get it uh, right. I'm sorry. Trojan horse. Trojan horse. Yeah, gotcha. All right. <laughs> Uh, You're eight, making all the other innuendos. I can't make one. Uh, eight four four seven seven zero thirty seven seventy six. Uh, yeah, right. What's going on? I mean, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> I'm just sorry that you don't know the historical reference. <sighs> okay, so this is bad. What is <laughs> <laughs> the radio show? No, uh, no. You check it out. People news. listening, no. I don't think they do. They don't think you don't you don't think they know. <laughs> I'm not gonna Google it on my computer though. I will give you that. Ah, <laughs> uh, all right. Let's let's start. But that over. is facts. Let's, that's like in the Congress. I, I don't the think Library Frankie Fiddler had anything to do with this. I think he did. What do you think he had to do with this? I think he's, he's uncommitted. <laughs> right, but I think he I think him and uh Chuck are gonna end up at Creighton. If that happens to Creighton. Feel, yep. <laughs> Where are you getting that from? I I don't think it's a bad call. Yeah. Uh, because good. Creighton was on. It's in Nebraska. It's on Freddie's um, list. <laughs> it's from Nebraska. Chuck is from Nebraska. I think the Badgers thought they were sneaking Freddie to the Cole Center, and Freddie was sneaking Chucky to Creighton to be a Blue Jay. <laughs> is his name Frankie? Frankie Fiddler, yeah. That's Not his name. Freddie. Oh, what did I say, Freddie? Wait, is it Frankie or Freddie? It's Frankie. Is it Frankie? Are you He's sure? Freddie. Who cares? <laughs> I he's do. A, he's Deep Throat. That's his name. He stole Chucky from the Badgers. Hey, now. <laughs> I just, I mean, I don't know what happened, but this is unfortunate. This, this, this is the heartbeat of their team. This is four of their top seven scorers from a year ago are now gone. Wall out of eligibility. The other three in the portal. Store, obviously, the leading scorer goes to Kansas. Probably got a million-plus dollars for that. A CJ is, is on his recruitment tour. And school and Jesse Nelson. Did you hear about this, by the way, on Saturday? Jesse Nelson and Adam Mertz did a specialty show from the Bogey Factory in Verona. And to start off the show, Jesse Nelson said Connor Siegen is committed to Maryland, even though within the tweet oh, it's that what the joke not about? committed. Yeah. Gotcha. There was a lot of jokes in our my muted ESPN Madison conversation. I found out multiple other people in our office have that group chat of muted. Of course. <laughs> Who doesn't Ryan, mute? Do you have group that group chat muted? I do not. I I, I'm a part of the group. I'm a teammate, unlike you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I, I said I don't either. <laughs> I find it on my own time. <laughs> I don't need constant text. 
So anyway, uh, so Chucky's out. So I was, I, I actually am glad you played the timer sound because it reminded me of Minute to Win It. Um, if I could name the players left on the Badgers roster, because I think we'd all struggle with it. Oh, let's fire it up. Let's do it. Stroff's Mr. Badger Basketball. And I'm not, I'm not, I can can you, name, get, can you get the roster up though? Yeah, I probably named four or five. Because I think I can name most of them. Hold on. But it's not many. I think there's only eight guys left, if that. So let, let me know when you're good. Let me know when you're good. I'm going to try to name them all. It, just to give you and w- why I'm doing this. The point in me doing this exercise is to show you to make how, everyone cry. how bad the Badgers will be next year unless they figure something out quick. But the first rush of the transfer portal is over and done with. The Badgers missed their opportunity. So what we're looking at right now is the following players. Jim, are you ready? I am ready. Ryan, are you ready? Will Matt beat the odds? I say everything with pure confidence, whether I think I'm totally right or not. 51 minutes win it. Or yeah, I do. under pressure. Pressure, pressure. This is the Minute she to Win It, wrong, presented man. by North and South Sea Food and Smokehouse, with three locations in Madison, DeForest, and Verona. All right, Jim, you take it away. All right, uh, Matt, or uh, Alex. <laughs> You have, I'm giving you 30 seconds. You have 30 seconds to name as many Badger players currently rest, left on the roster. All right, uh, let's go with Kamari McGee. Are you going to go in numerical order? Steven Crowell, no. I'm already up, out of numerical order. Carter Gilmore. <laughs> what a list. Max Klesman is still on the team. Is this UW-Eau Claire? What is right. that? Uh, Jack Janicki, the, the red shirt freshman, is still on the roster. Isaac Gard, still on the roster. Actually, he left. He said, I'm sick of this. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who else do we have is the issue. Um, I'm trying Nolan to think Winter. Oh, John Blackwell is still there, obviously. Nolan Winter? Nolan Winter is still there. That's all I got, though. That's it. It's been like 40 seconds. That's and, all well, I got. The Badgers roster is not updated. Is... Chris Hodges still on the Chris team? Chris Hodges is technically still on the team, yes. All righty. I think you listed. I think I saw. I think that's it. Or I don't know who this is. Luke Hartle. Uh, no, he transferred. That's what I thought. I thought I saw a name. Like, that was one of those names. Like, who the hell is that? You said Isaac Lindsay? Uh, he transferred. No, he transferred. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. Also, if you go like number two, AJ Store transferred. Number three, Connor Season transferred. <laughs> Kept number four, Tyler. Number five, Tyler Wall gone. Number 10, Isaac Lindsay gone. You got number 11, Klesmit. Then Hartle's gone, number 12. Number 14, <laughs> Carter Gilmore still here. Isaac Gard, 15. I don't know, whatever. Uh, 21, Chris Hodges. Uh, 22, Chris uh, Stephen Crawl uh, still, still here. here. And then Chuck Hepburn, 23, 23 is gone. gone. Blackwell, 25, still here. Whoever the hell, Ross. Uh, Candelino, he transferred. Great. Number 30, gone. Get him out of here. Uh, 31, <laughs> Nolan Winter still here. Uh, Jack Janecki, apparently that's a real person. Yeah, he's still here. From but White I think Bear Lake, shirting. Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, and then Gus Young, 34, gone. Do you say uh, Ivor? Silver? Elver? No, I did not say Marcus Silver. Great call. He'll Is actually get some minutes next year. Well, we're in Shoot, great he shape. he might start next year. We're in great shape here. Everything's fine. Nothing uh, nothing to worry about here with Badger basketball. What do they do? <sighs> I mean, it's probably too late to fire guard. Can we just shut it down? Can, we just, can they take a, like a, um, take a year off? They're going to travel abroad. The whole team. They're just <laughs> <laughs> taking a gap year. <laughs> For the master's program. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's, just, let's just take some time away. I mean, Stephen Crowell and Max Klesman and John Blackwell are the only players that are going to score. Carter Gilmore poses zero offensive threat. Nolan Winter might make a three every once in a while. Kamari McGee's pretty solid, but he's probably not starter good. I mean, this, this is a bottom four Big Ten team, and you're adding four well, more and, teams and to and the poor, Big Ten. And poor Daniel Freitag, like, everyone's just like, oh. Yeah. Oh, did you see his tweet? Now he did follow up, but didn't he say that like this is an oppor- this is an opportunity for him? So, yeah, he'll he'll probably be the starting point guard next year, I right? Guess. So he's not leaving. He's followed up saying it means I'm all in regardless yeah. of the money. That's awesome. Which means the Badgers not paying him anything. Which means someone like literally someone with money saw that tweet and said, eh, "I think he, we can get you to come here." Oh, he even updated his Twitter bio. It just says Wisconsin Badgers point guard now. I oh, like that. Million. My guy. I Daniel feel like Freitag. it is more than a zero chance that <laughs> that someone comes in with money just to. Because there's a dollar amount, and I wouldn't blame his kids. They would get him to leave. I don't think so. Oh, really? Not before he gets to campus? Half million? You don't know that he's not making anything. Yeah, but if a half million, let's say he's 250. Based on what we know of the Badgers, he's probably like at best 250. If that. Yeah. If that. So if someone said, you know what? I, I always wanted him, and let's just <laughs> let's just do it. And Jack Robinson. Jack Robinson, yeah. Robinson, sorry. Um yeah, that's he's, it. He's, he's, he's a stud. He was really good. Yeah, he's a tiny person, though. He played in Madison earlier, too. Yeah, but he's, like, super tournament. skinny. Like, uh, yeah, so am I. 
You're right. You can't play Big Ten basketball either. Well, according to your tweet, they might recruit me. Yeah. Um, I'm not like that. Fry Talk probably coming in play. Both these guys are three star guys. So I, I like people are putting too much pressure on, on Robeson and Fry Talk. I don't like it. I don't like the state of the program. No, I, and, and like I said before, I think you're kind of past the point of the transfer portal getting any real studs. So I mean, I don't know. People just pulled two good players off the bat. Well, no, Chucky was transferring out of, out of nowhere was weird. And, yeah, AJ was just looking for the money. I mean, that was that AJ was, pretty, was technically already in the portal. Yeah, he was in the portal. I'd also said he's going to go to the draft and not get an agent. I assume he's not doing that anymore now. Why would he? Hey, he's probably making at least a million dollars at Kansas because yeah. there was a rumor, and I, I I haven't confirmed the rumor, but I read it online that oh, well, Kentucky. That's good then. Just ask Aaron Rodgers. If you well, read it was it like a, it fine. was like a real reporter. Uh, Kentucky offered him seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, and he said no. Not Kentucky. Yeah, it was Kentucky. Was it Kentucky or Kansas who initially offered the room allegedly? I thought it was Kentucky, and now he's at Kansas. It's one of the blue blood programs. I know Calipari wanted him at Arkansas. Is the last what I read for a story that that was one of the schools in on him. Uh, well, I think Calipari was in on him before he left Kentucky. So, yes, I think we are all correct here. It doesn't matter, uh, really. I mean, whatever no, the number really. is, we're, we're arguing he's not going to play here anymore. Uh, 262 chimes in. Our only hope is either uh, Tyrese Hunter or Seth Trimble. I'm sorry, man. I have no faith in the player, the Badgers pulling in anyone of note. Like, literally the only thing the Badgers can do is pull, like, D2 and mid-major guys or find another A.J. Store type where you are someone who is being underused at a, at a Power 5 conference. It's honestly the idea of how I thought football was going to go, mm-hmm. where it's like you should be picking the scraps up. Like whoever Kansas just kicked out a little bit or kicked down the depth chart, that's who the Badgers should be calling. Mm-hmm. Whoever Chucky's kicking down the depth chart at possibly Creighton, uh, that's who the Badgers should be calling. And then they should be looking at every other school. I think FAU's got two guys in the portal that haven't committed yet. Victor Golden committed to Michigan, but I think there's two other players from their Final Four team. I feel like they'd be better than what they got. They at least have playing experience. I guarantee they're not costing a million. And FAU doesn't have a million dollars for the whole program. No so no doubt. Uh, there are players out there. Uh, maybe we can look up some players in the transfer portal because apparently there is some mythical list. <laughs> According to what I saw, AJ Storr was like at the top of it. So somewhere there <laughs> exists a list of people in the portal. Our guy Joseph S. on the YouTube chat, Jay, yeah. says, who has the worst case of insomnia this week, Greg Gard or Doc Rivers? Uh, Greg Gard because Doc uh, has got a nice – Check it'll keep him around at least for some of next year. And Greg David Deerfield chimes in. Remember two years ago when the leaving seniors had a meeting and called Greg Gard out? I do remember that, but that was for something different than his coaching, if I'm not mistaken. Well, it's still look, when something like this happens and the program is hemorrhaging, everything matters. Everything's gonna be brought yeah, back. That's, up. that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Yeah, this is this is uh really bad. The, the state of this program is, is horrible. So um after today's news, because when you lose your team, your team's heartbeat, essentially, is what Chucky Hepburn is. And that was the way he was viewed. He was viewed as the floor general. He was viewed as a player that could do a little bit of everything. So uh, it's, uh, it's disappointing. Uh, 844-770-3776. Are the Badgers, this is our first poll question, are the Badgers trending to be a bottom-tier Big Ten team? 844-770-3776. J&K Security, uh, Jeffrey over there, and the whole... Uh, J&K family care about protecting your home and business, whether it's commercial fire detection, commercial security, home personal or home security, control four in your home, uh, and also giving back to the community. That is what J&K Security Solutions is about. I'll learn more at jksecurity.com. This is Rutledge and Hamilton, presented by Coors Light. You're listening to Rutledge and Hamilton, presented by Coors Light. Also brought to you by J&K Security Solutions, securing homes and businesses in the Madison area since 1987. At Gruber Law Offices, we take great pride in helping those who have trusted us after a serious accident. Our team has the knowledge, resources, and experience to get you the results you deserve. Don't wait to get the help you need. Make the right call. Call Gruber Law Offices today. Proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. One call, that's all. Why does Calshire Implement Company Incorporated have several copier printers from James Imaging Systems? President Glenn Whipperfirth. Good people, easy to work with, and local. Talk to me about the James Imaging Systems people. Greg is our service guy. He's been phenomenal to work with. Andrew. Andrew, that's your James sales rep. He's been great to work with as well. James Imaging Systems, local people, and a 100% Wisconsin-owned and managed business technology company. That means a lot to local businesses. 
It definitely means something to me. It's actually the reason why we're still with them. Glenn, does James Imaging Systems help you keep your customers happy? Happy customers, yes. And you've also been a James customer for years, right? Yes, happy customers make repeat customers. Be happy. Switch to copy your printers from James Imaging Systems. It's easy to do. Call 608-221-3457 or visit jamesimaging.com. James Imaging Systems, your local business technology partner. Your Honda gets you everywhere. When it needs service, you need Zimbrick Honda service. Their customer service is second to none, and you can experience it yourself at two convenient Madison locations on Fish Hatchery Road and Grand Canyon Drive. Honda certified technicians handle it all. You can even get flexible payment options. Fix your car now and pay later. Apply online to see your options in seconds with no hard credit check. Make your service appointment online at ZimbrickHonda.com. Zimbrick Honda Service Center on Fish Hatchery Road and Grand Canyon Drive. Part of the Madison community since 1973. Shop Zimbrick Honda. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we get you outdoors because we get you. Whether you're ready to build your dream yard or get out on the water, we get you the right products at the right prices. Like 40-pound bags of Blaine's brand wild bird food, $16.99. $5 off your choice of estate weed and feed or lawn fertilizer. Find great deals on trailers and towing, like $30 off select Kurt trailer hitches and mounts. And all Blazer trailer lighting is 15% off rewards members. We get you outdoors because we get you at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Do you have trouble getting in and out of the bathtub? Are you afraid you'll slip and fall entering or exiting a tub? Safe Step Walk-In Tubs can transform your bathtub from an area of concern to a calming refuge. Call them today at 1-800-731-4558 and save $1,600. Safe Step Walk-In Tubs and Showers are proudly made in Tennessee and offer an ultra-low step in, avoiding that difficult climb over a traditional bathtub wall. They also offer a variety of therapeutic benefits that may help soothe your aching muscles and joints, increasing your mobility, boosting your energy, and improving your sleep. Safe Step Walk-In Tubs are designed to easily fit your existing tub space and are often installed in as little as one day. Just dial 1-800-731-4558 today to save $1,600 and receive a free shower package. That's 1-800-731-4558 for a free no-obligation consultation and to save $1,600. Safe Step Walk-In Tubs. Safety never felt so good. You're listening to Rutledge and Hamilton on 100.5 ESPN. Brought to you by Ho-Chunk Gaming Medicine. Rutledge and Hamilton continues live from the Everlight Solar Studio. I am Rutledge. She is Alex Struff, Matt Hamilton in um, Sweden. He's going to be surprised as hell when he gets back because he's no way he's following any of this right now. But he's just curling with the Badger basketball program. He is going to be flabbergasted for what Matt missed when he learns that AJ Store and Chucky Hepburn gone. AJ Store to Kansas, Chucky Hepburn uh, whereabouts uh, to be determined. I want to play, and we do have a poll question here, so you can chime in on that. I want to chime in. Our poll question is, are the Badgers trending to be a bottom-tier Big Ten team? 844-770-3776. That's how you can get into the show, 844-770-3776. Right now, 70% of people say, yes, they are trending to, towards the bottom of the Big Ten. And uh, Wisconsin Nation upset. What is this question? Name a Big Ten school that isn't struggling with the transfer portal and I money. NIL money. Illinois wanted store and got outbid by Kansas. Where was Illinois last year? Way higher than Wisconsin. You know who else is on par with Wisconsin who I wouldn't say I'm blown away to say that? Uh, Northwestern. So stop giving excuses. I'm not saying they can't fix it, but they sure as hell are trending towards the bottom. Doesn't mean they'll stay there. Doesn't mean they'll end up there. It's just trending that way. And if you can't see that, open your eyes. Because don't sit here and cry about money or the portal. Because you know what, Illinois, you kind of proved your own point. They were going for the guy that Wisconsin lost. So Illinois was trying to attract a player in the portal. Wisconsin, meanwhile, has like six players and is playing tiddlywinks. <laughs> and Chucky Hartburn got Hello. taken out the door. Tiddlywinks. That's all I'm saying. All right, I want to play a little Tinder time, Tinder time with Alex Stroff. Tiddlywink, tiddlywinks yeah, time with Alex Stroff. Uh, 844 3776 You can chime in on that. But I have a list here of uh, the top players in the portal 
and I have some names of players who are still in the portal. The number one player still available in the portal is, do you want to make a guess? Uh, the way you phrase that, I'm going to guess it's somebody from Florida Atlantic. Jonelle Davis. From Florida Atlantic. Yeah, six foot four guard, makes 41% of his threes, six rebounds, two assists over the last two years. He's got one season left to play, also testing the NBA draft waters. Would you swipe right or left on Jonelle Davis from FAU? I, I would just like to point out I have a hard time swiping left when you've got like 74 roster spots sure, to fill. So true. I will be swiping Well, right. also, he's the number one available player. So that would be another thing. Uh, Jeremy Roach from Duke, six foot one guard, all ACC uh, in 2023 24. Yeah, but he's not coming here. I'm just saying names, man. Mark Mitchell, Duke. Uh, is he committed somewhere? As of this thing says no, and they were, they're on it. They, I they, think he had committed temporarily to uh, Arkansas. Because they already have Wisconsin for A.J. Storr, the fifth player in their portal thing, committed to Kansas. So, like, they're and Chucky's in this thing now. So, okay. they are very up-to-date on it. So, Mark Mitchell. Uh, I mean, yeah. Started 67 games at Duke over the last two seasons, former top five prospect. Then, yes. I mean, but that means he will never come here. All right, I'm trying to find some ones that maybe will come here. So I should look at the, like the bottom 32. Uh, I, yeah, I would go. DJ to, Wagner like, from Kentucky. That's 11th. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Ooh, what about uh, just say Kareem names, Abdul Jabbar, like how about, Robbie Avilia? How about? Oh yeah, I, I've been pushing for him. I feel like he gets a great. He'd NIL be like deal what Gus Bus we thought he was going to be. Yeah, <laughs> like Robbie's actually that player. Uh, how about like BJ Freeman? He was, I think, Milwaukee's leading scorer last year. And Milwaukee had a nice, it, it, like I think of a Kamari okay. McGee type because Kamari McGee had a great freshman year at UW Green Bay. Yeah, we need more of those, like just mid-major to power five. Just, I'm kidding. What are we trying to? What are we trying to win the NIT again? Jim, this team isn't going to make the NIT. Well, that then you need to fill roster spots. I'm not saying he's your starting point guard for the future. Cade Tyson, Belmont, power forward. I think BJ Freeman is. I don't know who that is. Shot uh, 40. Well, that's the type of guy. Where did he play? Belmont. 45% three-point shooter. Six I thought his name seven. was Tyson Belmont. Cade Tyson from Belmont. Cade Tyson. Six foot seven. Got so it. a big man with a, with a jumper. Shoots uh, 45% from three. Volume shooter. <laughs> Count me in. All righty. I'm trying to think of any. What about Chucky Eppert? No, he's 18th <laughs> on the list. Uh, Where's the season <laughs> on that list? Brandon Garrison. <laughs> That Oklahoma sounds like State. a Badger. That's yeah, a Badger. That Former uh, top 50 prospect, McDonald's All-American, 21st on the list here. Uh, played 22 minutes a game at Oklahoma State. Sir? Where's when, the season on your list? Uh, it's not my list. I'm scrolling down here. Siege is not on it yet. Okay. Apparently, Oklahoma lost a lot of players. Uh, One name I saw floated out there. Former Texas player. Former Racine native, Tyrese Hunter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tyrese Hunter's out there. They're not in the top 30. I'm in on that. This guy feels like a badger. Danny Wolf from Yale. 14 points, 10 rebounds, block per game. <laughs> Gotta get that block in there. Gotta get that block. Elijah Martin, 33rd on the list. Uh, Three-time all-conference performer at FAU. 37% from three. Sir? I, I mean, Ryan again, I, I'm, I'm gonna, State. I feel like I just got out of a breakup and Seth I'm on Tinder. Trim I'm just swiping right nonstop. <laughs> Seth Trimble. Yes, former Mr. Basketball. In this state. In this state. B.J. Freeman, 37th on this list. Seth Trimble, that's actually a guy they should go after. I didn't, re I didn't even realize he was in the portal. Jalen Blackman. Former, former Tar Heel. From Stetson. Sounds like a cigarette brand, but <laughs> I smoked by Stetson's. I think that is a cigarette Damn! brand, isn't is it? it? I don't know. <laughs> Probably adjacent. I feel like you can't name your school or name your cigarette after school. Aiden Mahani from St. Uh, Mary's. I'll take that one. Just naming random small ass schools because that seems to be all the Badgers can afford. Um, Tyrese Hunter, 46th on this list. Yeah, uh, in state guys, I'm always for. If you missed him on the first go round, get him on the second, which you didn't do with Marcus Damask. Uh, oh, this one. Great Oso Bowl. Oh, from yeah, Utah he's the big. State. Yeah, the big, the big from Utah State. We could use some nice. size. I, mean, I want a guy named Great. Okay. He's, he's highly thought of. In the portal. It's actually fun. No, he's not. Uh, Frankie Fiddler. What do you mean, no, he's not? He's like 50th on this list. Uh, on the list on 24-7 sports, he's second. Well, that's a stupid list. I'm going with CBS. Uh, you know who owns 24-7 sports? sports? Right, but I'm, this is CBS's <laughs> national recruiting. 
I'm just saying. <laughs> Which is 24-7 This is sports. literally, when is that from? Because this is updated it's, it's like also in the updated. moment. Yeah, AJ Store is updated too. Well, 59th on this list. I, I don't know. Great so even, is a uh, is a was is the number two center in his class. He was a fifth overall prospect. Frankie Fiddler, 59th. From England. Frankie Fiddler, 59th on this list. Well, I would assume he's not coming and anymore. And he's too good for the Badgers. So we got to go lower on the list here. Javon, what do we got? Uh, God, Roddy is, Gale Jr. from Ohio radio. State. Would you shut up and play along? You're just not playing along. Well, who am I going to say no to, Jim? They have nobody on the roster. I want you to say Andrew Carr. No. No? I don't know who he is. JP Pegas. Oh, wait. No, he already went from Furman to Auburn. We're getting scooped Oh, I by... thought your list was updated. Well, it is updated. I just didn't see it on there. We're in a bad state. This is bad. I'm aware. Everything's under control. That's why I've said it's yes to everybody normal. you've said. We're fine. We're all fine here. No, they you. need to fill like six scholarships. Our uh, cigarette expert, Tim in Oregon, says it's not a sig. It's not a sig. <laughs> Our cigarette expert. 844 uh, 770 uh, The text line's having fun. So how about you just have some fun, Alex? How can you have fun when the Badgers are in shambles? How is that fun? Our pets' heads are falling off. Come on. <laughs> How how can I have fun when my second favorite team in the state is in complete shambles? Do people know that I like the Badgers? Tyler and Sun Prairie chimes in. Jim, you know I love you, but your fib is really showing. At the same time, Badger basketball is about to go into a long slump. Probably should cut ties with guard and reboot. Bears still suck. I uh, think they're going to have a cleaner opportunity to do it next year. Because then you have Klesmet, I think McGee, and Crowell all... And Gilmore, if you want to count him, all out of eligibility next year. You might as well hit a reset after next year if things go poorly. But guard is known for elevating bad teams, right? Like some of the teams that guard has had that we thought would be not great have ended up top four in the Big Ten. You think that's happening this time around? Uh, adding four teams to the Big Ten. No. I'll be happy if they finish outside of the bottom four of the Big Ten. I don't know, man. As it stands right now, I'm not feeling good about it. But there's still some offseason left. Obviously, Jim just read... Uh, 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 you know, one twenty fourth of the names left in the portal. Take that for that. I knew about three but, of wait, them. Wait, answer my but... question. Like, how is nothing I'm saying is uh, you're I just w- reading a list of names? But like, <laughs> someone's calling me a fib. I like the Badgers. I want them to do well. <laughs> I'm just also not going to suffer crap. And I hope they go get my FAU players. Go get them both. Well, you hate college basketball. You're, you're very much on the record saying that. Yeah, Joe but I also Mitchell, don't want to have a crappy team here in Madison. Well, I got bad news. It's, it's here. Not looking great. Uh, Rip Ron is trying to recruit you to go uh, be a Marquette fan. Um, I mean, I like Marquette, but I, I, I will pick. I will pick the Badgers. Eric in Green Bay chimes in. Where's Noah Reynolds on the list? Had oh yeah, that's to UW right. Last yeah, yeah. year before heading to UW Green Bay, he was from Wyoming. He committed to Wisconsin. His brother took a job as an assistant coach under Sonny Wicks at Green Bay. Committed there was, uh, I think, the Horizon League newcomer of the year. So, yeah, that, that would be a good one. Um, I, I'm all in on Noah Reynolds. Ryan, our psychedelic advisor chimes in. Is Wisconsin just going to forfeit all their games? You know what? I think that would be less painful. I think we just, again, took a gap year. <laughs> just didn't have to watch it. You know, they, they went to uh, – I, I was talking with a videographer who works for the Big Ten Network who went with them to France the other year, and he, like, shot that Big Ten Network special. And he said, you know, it was a great trip. They, they connected so well. Why don't they just do that for the entire season next year? <laughs> there you go. Uh, 844 3776 how you get into the show. Are the Badgers trending towards to be a bottom of the Big Ten team? And uh, right now, the poll says 63% say yes. They are trending towards the bottom. Ooh, a lot I don't, of people say no still. I don't know if they're going to end up there. Nowhere okay is even crazier. Like, Ryan likes to add these little caveats to the questions. I wanted to help clarify. I had some caveats. the hell out of me. I just I, wanted I a yes or too. no. I've always done that, too. Yeah, your well, yeah, caveats did, are important. Jim, no, does they're not. me adding we're okay change the con- – does it get it to does. change anyone's answer? It's softened. I want a yes or no. I don't want a reasoning. Well, I don't I want put, any I put the context bargaining. of yes by saying being a bottom-tier Big Ten program because I didn't put that in the question because that wording wasn't great. Gotcha. But you could have said no. I'm a big <laughs> simpler. Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. That's what it is. Not that you guys are stupid. Go, kiss your, go kiss your producer. <laughs> oh, you can kiss uh, something, I'll tell you that. But I tell you what, people, they see me, they go, this guy is kissable because I work out at Carbon World Health. I am stronger than I've ever been. I've been fitter than I've ever been, and it's all thanks to the folks at Carbon World Health. Uh, some of the glutide has helped me drop about 23 pounds, drop around 13% body fat. 
uh, and it allows me to live my best life. And you can do the same thing by going to Carbon World Health. Go talk to Dr. Nestor Rodriguez. Ask him about semi-glutide. Ask him about hormone optimization. See what is right for you to help you reach your fitness goals. Best way to do it is sign up for the six-week experience. This is Rutledge and Hamilton presented by Coors Light. You're listening to Rutledge and Hamilton presented by Coors Light. The mountains are blue and we can prove it. Follow the show on Twitter at Jim and Matt. Beautify your entertainment space with Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Hi, this is Gina Della from Pella. Turn your ordinary space into something extraordinary with brand new Pella Windows. Plus, getting the perfect windows and doors for your home has never been easier. Right now, get 0% interest for up to 36 months. Or no down payment, no interest, and no payments for up to 18 months if you book before April 30th. Take ownership of your living space and make it a place worth living with Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Step into nostalgia with the Miller High Life Dive Bar of the Week. Listen to Rutledge and Hamilton every Thursday, and we will let you know where you can enjoy $2 Miller High Lifes. To celebrate our love for dive bars, me and Matt are going to tell you about some of our favorites, featuring one extra special dive bar that will have $2 High Lifes on special for the week. Taste the champagne of beer in its natural environment. A delightfully different dive bar in Wisconsin, like Vin's Missouri Tavern, Baldwin Street Grill, r j Saloon, and Paoli Pub and Grill. If you're looking for a special piece of jewelry for any occasion, Condon Jewelers is always there for you. Condon Jewelers has the best selection of jewelry you'll ever find and guaranteed to have the lowest prices in the Madison area. Free shipping is always available. Visit CondonJeweler.com or call 241-3406 and ask for Jim, the owner, who's at the store every day. Shop locally. Condon Jewelers, the jeweler on the east side, the jeweler on your side. It's Chevy truck season, and there's no better time to do what you do best. No better time to get the job done in a Chevy Silverado with best-in-class standard torque and a Turbomax engine with a five-year, 100,000-mile limited powertrain warranty that outlasts both Ford and Ram. So kick off whatever your thing is season right, because it all starts with a Chevy truck. See your Badgerland Chevy dealer today. Based on latest competitive data, excludes other GM vehicles, whichever comes first. See dealer for limited warranty details based on Ford and Ram. Five-year, 60,000-mile warranty on gasoline engines. Madison athletes seeking elite training need to get started today at Total Athlete Performance. TAP is here to serve and educate the serious athlete with their speed, agility, and semi-private training options. Sessions are now available in both Windsor and their TAP facility inside the Verona Athletic Center. Also access remote training anytime, anywhere with the Total Athlete Performance app. Visit TAPWisconsin.com for subscriptions, including monthly payment options. That's TAPWisconsin.com. Hey Badgers, spring is right around the corner and so is the annual Crazy Legs Classic. Register today for the 8K run or 2-mile walk on April 27th and celebrate 175 years of UW-Madison. The Crazy Legs Classic is presented by J.D. McCormick Properties, Odyssey Greek Yogurt, Mueller Sports Medicine, and WMTV 15. For more information and to register, visit crazylegsclassic.com. That's crazylegsclassic.com. Good Karma Brands is proud to be an equal opportunity employer. Our policy is to provide equal opportunity employment, development, and advancement to all current and potential teammates. If you are an organization that maintains a job bank, provides employment information, or gives job referrals, you may request to be placed on the station's mailing list for future career opportunities. To learn more about careers at Good Karma Brands, please email careers at goodkarmabrands.com. Welcome back to Rutledge and Hamilton, presented by Coors Light on 100.5 ESPN. Also brought to you by J&K Security Solutions. Nobody has a real good feeling about Badger basketball right now. What are you? What? Well, we it's official. Alex Shelf can't dance. You were dancing it like took a, you this long to figure that like out. Like a baby in a crib that's just getting control, but not complete control over its bodily this functions. This is kind of my go-to move. Yes, like is, when I'm at a club or something. Is Molly Brown like, still, no, Molly Brown's not here because I feel like her uh, her baby boy has the same dance moves as you. Yeah, and that, you that, lay that, them down in the crib. And they're just starting to understand their motor skills, <laughs> and uh, that's Alex Strauss. Well, mine never really moves. developed, I don't think. 
obviously. In terms of dancing, yeah. In terms of most things. Uh, this is Rutledge and Hamilton presented Watch by Coors Light. Uh, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> hey, Quit. shut up. Oh, no. Don't go. This is Rutledge and <laughs> Hamilton presented by Coors Light. Uh, if the bottles are blue, you know what to do. Let's crush a Coors Light like I'm going to crush you. All right. Did you get that out of your system? Yeah. All right. Uh, he's Alex Stroff. I'm Jim Rutledge. Primetime Laura Sean behind the glass. We're asking you. Is Badger basketball heading towards the bottom of the Big Ten? Right now, 62% of you say yes. And, Alex, I think there's a lot to get to with this Badger program of why they're here. But I, th- the concern I have is that this program is, and I said it to start the show, more standing around whining and crying, and some alum are doing it, and some fans are doing it as well, as far as their players getting stolen. And they're getting a little lunch money stolen. Instead of stealing someone else's lunch money to get their lunch, they're just going to stand there and cry about well, it. Well, no. So uh, you keep saying that, and I don't think that's accurate. Well, who was replacing AJ Store? They I, weren't I, active I, enough in doing it. Obviously, they don't have. I don't that know, but AJ Store wasn't. Connor Seijin left. AJ Store wasn't brought in at this time of year last year. But I'm saying right now, the player, the Badgers are hemorrhaging players, and they're not bringing anyone in. And yeah. what are they doing? Great guards comments today, crying about it. Says it's a financial decision. But he also said that he's in communication with a high level point guard. They're doing something about it, or at least they're they attempting haven't to. Today you can say that they got their lunch money stolen and they haven't done anything about it. Right, but come tomorrow, what if they add three guys? They're still standing here crying about it. I'm talking about today, and here's the thing, Alex. This program has been trending this way. The way they recruit is kind of the old Packer like draft and develop. You cannot recruit and develop anymore because what you're doing is you're going to end up being a feeder system for the Power 5 conferences. The Badgers have to be proactive. In my opinion, the way that you're going to build this Badger program especially they're not going to have the money of the Blue Bloods, is to understand that any star player you have here, you need to treat them as they're a one-and-done for your program, whether they're going to the NBA or going into the transfer portal. If they don't, great. But if they do, you're at least ready for it, which means you always have to have a backlog of recruiting ready to go of players who are ready to step in. And you might have to have, which is abnormal for the Badgers, three out of your five starters be new to the program players. In most years, the Badgers don't have three out of five new starters. They need to get used to having three out of five starters being new to the program. And the leaders of this program need to be uh, the back-end players who aren't going to be pulled away. So you got the guys who are going to be there four years. They're the ones that have to be the bedrock, and you just sub in the stars over the top over and over again. You build the foundation of some players who aren't going to be pulled away, the Carter Gilmores of the world who can be these leaders, be these guys, and then what you do is you have to remodel every year. You have to just remodel it, and you have to be willing to do it, and you have to show it year over year. Yeah, but that's new, Jim. That's not like this is a this is an old four years. Thing. This this will be year four, right? So it's but, not that new, but it, but it wasn't that. How pro- the match is done in this four-year run? But it wasn't that run. prominent. This is the most transfer portal entries they've had by a mile this year. Right, this is very it, different. This is the first time the they put on quote hammers. I'm not disagreeing with that. Yes, but to act like this was the standard and we were all so stupid that we didn't realize this was coming is no, not is not the fair. way the bat. No, but what I said is factual. The way they recruit and they did not move off fast enough is trying this basically recruit and develop. Right. And what do they do? They recruit it and develop Chucky Hepburn so he could go play somewhere else. Yeah, and that's unfortunate because I, I really truly thought he would be the one. I wouldn't guy say they developed Connery season, but they recruited him with a plan for him hopefully making a step. He never took that step for whatever the reason was, and then he left. I, I think he was held back from taking that step this year, but yeah, point remains. I'm just saying that's still on the staff. It's still on the program. For whatever sure. happened that, there, that, that did with. not work out. So the that's just a regular old miss. I fully agree with. AJ yeah. Store, I think they recruited with the idea that he was going to be here more than one year. I mean, yes, but also his track record doesn't do that. This is now his seventh school in seven years. And that's fine. Gus Yeldon, high well, then don't rec- Gus Yeldon went to a bunch of high schools. He's here for one year and leaves. So then maybe don't recruit people who don't smoke have a track in your dorm room. You don't have a track record of jumping schools every year. Like, there are facts. None of this should be a surprise to them at all. They should have backup plans. So yes, the players but the Chucky be thing is surprising, and, and the that's players why we're aren't here now. the panic button, because I don't think any of us were hitting the panic button when the A.J. Storm news came I across. swear to God, true story. Uh, I made a joke about it, but when I saw Chucky with, uh, who's the player from Omaha? You tell me. Frankie Fiddler? Yeah, you got yeah, it. Frankie nice Fiddler. Um, I thought to myself, what if Frankie's trying to take Chucky to Nebraska instead of Chucky take Frankie to Wisconsin. So I just want to throw out there that at this time last year, we were going through not quite to this level, but at least a little bit of a similar path. But you felt good because everybody had said they were coming back. But Noah Reynolds decommitted from Wisconsin on April 19th. So that's one year ago tomorrow. If you want to count the leap day, it's 365 days ago today. So you were going through it. A.J. Storr didn't commit until after Noah Reynolds decommitted. A.J. Storr ended up being your leading scorer. I'm not saying... 
chill out because this is obviously much worse than it was a year ago. But the transfer portal's weird. There's still going to be entries. It's it's May, it's April 18th. I don't think anybody expected Chucky Hepburn to enter the portal today. But we're not talking about just the portal. We're talking about a program that missed the tournament and then lost in the first round that hasn't made a Sweet 16 in seven years. Yeah. That's the whole program. It's concerning. The portal is just the cancer that is attacking us at this moment. And maybe you'll have a cure for next year. But at this moment, the portal is just the latest symptom in the disease that is affecting Wisconsin basketball that has not lived up to, I don't think, that are high standards of make a gosh darn Sweet 16 once in seven years. How, how, how much money do you think a college basketball program needs to be to be consistently good? I'm talking the Yukons. I'm talking Kentucky. I'm talking Kansas. I'm talking Duke. How much money do you money need? Money doesn't guarantee it because Kentucky, their ass was out. But FAU doesn't have seat. any money. They, they were, were in the Final seat. Four. Well, how much money does... Uh, James Madison had to just beat the Badgers' ass at the tournament. Probably not a whole lot less than the Badgers. So it's not all money. You can sit here and cry money. I'm not saying you're doing it, but it's not all money. Uh, it certainly plays a role, though, because you're saying that they're not doing anything about it and going to steal other people's lunch money. They need money in order to go steal they other people's lunch money. They have money to steal other to steal mid-major money. They okay, don't have so money to compete How much money does it take? I asked you a question. No idea. Not a clue. A lot more than they're using right now. I would, imagine FA, I would imagine FAU and James Madison probably operate on a million bucks. Power five, ten. I, 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 I I'm bet, talking just for players. I bet Wisconsin's operating on a million bucks. No, there's not a chance to pay the players just a million dollars. If there, is, if that is the case, then someone needs to look at Mac. That's that, that's my point. Or you need well, to fire. Need to or and I've seen this one time. You need to fire a guard because you need to get someone in here that wants it. That I, people want to get money too. Just don't think the investment level. And I'd be interested in Ryan's opinion on this. Is I just don't think the investment level on basketball is very high. At Wisconsin, I just don't. I don't know. I don't know the answer. And this is a chicken or egg thing. If and I don't know what the name is. If the right name came in, does the money come in? Because that was part of the factor with Fickle. If the right name had head coach, you said yes. Is there a guy like that in college basketball these days? For Wisconsin, probably uh, Bennett. I mean, it's oh, Tony t- Bennett. But I for Wisconsin, know. I don't know that. He, say- I don't know that he's Tony Bennett's heck. son, right? What? Yes. What? D- Dick Bennett's, Bennett's son. son. Dick Bennett's son. There we it's go. Tony Bennett. Yeah. I mean, Tony uh, Bennett's getting up there in age, but I don't, I don't <laughs> think right, he's ready to coach yet. That's on my youngness. I apologize. My youth. Oh, good. Um, so I'm, I'm not saying he's a huge upgrade. I'm just saying that that would I don't bring know money that he's, in. I don't know that he's an upgrade, period. Well, he's been to a Final Four. And yeah, he's won a we national championship. Right, yeah, that too, he yes. also had NBA players when they went to the Final Four that year. Who, did they just arrive on campus? Well, guess there what? aren't NBA players in guess college what? basketball anymore. Guess what? <laughs> that, that was a, a team that was built on but recruiting and I'm developing. Not, I'm, I'm not talk- NIL right, didn't play a role there. Again, my point is. NIL didn't exist yet. Are you going to let me prove my point? My pro- my point is that people will pay money for Bennett. Guess who didn't make the tournament this year? They're over him in Virginia. I'm talking Wisconsin boosters will pay money for the Bennett last name. That's the part you can't list that you're not listening to. They would. But does that make a difference? You two are too young to know the Bennett name. No, I, but I, does not too young. Money I went to for Stevens the point. Name. I know the Bennett name. Oh, nobody can cares I, about the Bennett name. Stevens the, point. They care about the Madison bringing yes, them to the final Yes, they do. Four. The literal court is named after him at Stevens Point. Yeah, but that point. doesn't matter. We're not talking about Stevens so don't Point. Say I don't know nobody the Bennett cares name. about Stevens Point. Can this I ask the important question? You said I'm too young to know the Bennett name. You don't understand the importance of the Bennett name. That you don't think Tony Bennett would bring more money than Greg Gard at Wisconsin. If you're saying that, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. I don't know that he's the correct guy for the job. I, my whole point was I said his name because he would bring him more money. Guess what they did at Green Bay? They hired Will Ryan, Bo Ryan's son. Guess how that Who worked out? Who gives a crap about Green Bay? I'm talking about dollars at the program. Uh, that's it my point. A lot they of tried money. that at a mid-major. It didn't work. They Bennett. tried to hire a name. Stop Just, talking about when the game passes you by. The game like passes you by. Stevens point and the rest. I'm talking at Wisconsin. Bennett brings in money. Okay, I great. guarantee that. Utilize the money. He can't do it in Virginia anymore. They missed the tournament this that's year. That's fine. They're Bennett doing exactly what you're bitching about with Greg Gard. Bennett brings in money to Wisconsin. Guard isn't. That's my point. Bennett would bring in more money than I don't Gard, think that it would name change alone. Much. You are insane. If he, you don't think... sa- he is the same exact philosophy as With father did 40 last, years ago. It's branding. That's, a, that's the whatever car. That's a Ferrari that rolls in and here. And I'm telling you, they Ferrari. tried the branding at a mid-major level with Stop Will Ryan and it didn't work. talking to me about stupid programs nobody cares about. Wisconsin. Tony Bennett. Okay. That name would bring money in here. Oh, you're More right. Than great guard. Oh, you're right. We shouldn't care about mid-majors like you constantly harp on FAU, who was a mid-major, made the final UW four. Green Bay has been an insignificant program. I'm not for disagreeing their entire with lives. that. It's not a will but when NIL problem. Began, it is a Green Bay problem. But when NIL began, they Stop. took us. Oh, you're, don't, oh you're, don't tell me yes, to not cut you off. Don't cut Green me off. Bay into the pro. Nobody cares about Green Bay, man. Nobody cares about FAU, but they guess what they the did? Four. That's my Green point. Green Bay can't do sh- Crap. Crap. Green Bay is pointless. Stop bringing them up. Okay. They are an irrelevant program. Irrelevant. I'm, I'm telling you, your Tony philosophy Bennett, doesn't work. It does work. Tony Bennett, it's about branding. If you don't understand branding, I can't help you. Tony Bennett would bring more money into this program, 
by truckloads. Greg Gard was a better coach than him. I don't care about that. The whole conversation oh, okay. was about money. Can I point the something out? The conversation was about money. And by conversation about Tony Bennett bringing in truckloads mm. more money than Greg Gard is a factual thing that I will die in that hill. That brand is better in Wisconsin than Greg Gard's brand. You know where they had brand. a lot of money? You know where the boosters were given a lot? Kentucky. They got all the one and dones churning guys out year over year. Right. It doesn't work out. You need a team like UConn that produces good Correct. talent but can produce them over years, over a span of time. I don't know if Tony Bennett can do that. And I, I don't, don't know, know if he and my youth that I got his name wrong points out the fact that I don't know if players want to play for him like that. So he might have money, but does he attract the right players? But my whole and point is we got taken produce? down a rabbit hole that didn't matter. But if you do not think that Tony Bennett would bring in truckloads more money than great guard to the University of Wisconsin. But that's can't not help. the entire Tru equation. Isn't true. But that was my point. And that's what I'm sticking with right now is that is the point. I'm not saying Tony Bennett's the answer. What I'm saying is Tony Bennett would bring in more money. That's how the conversation was about money. Is he the right answer? Probably not. But about money, he's one example that he would solve the money problem. He might not solve the basketball problem, but he would solve the money problem. Has Luke Fickle solved the money problem? Yes. I don't know about that. I don't know about that either. Badgers, are, Badgers football is not getting the transfer portal players that other Big Ten schools are. Correct. Badger football has way more money than they used to. Under they Paul have Christ. more money, but relative to the rest of the conference. Right, but they're closer. What were they, a six-win mm, team I don't know about that. Seven-win team last year? You don't think they have more money now than when Paul Chris No, they there. have more money, but relatively no, the money. rest of the conference Correct. has okay, risen a level. The rest, right, but they still was the right move because think how much further back they would have been if they had Paul Christ here. That's fair. I'm not saying that they, they shouldn't. I'm not North saying Western. they shouldn't have hired Fickle, but my point is that the relative gap between the football teams and the top of the Big Ten yeah. and what Wisconsin is is maybe bigger than I think it is in basketball. And that's fine and dandy, but we're talking about basketball. And I'm talking right now, basketball, if it's a million-dollar operating budget, Tony Bennett, as an example, would bring in more money. You know how we could fix this problem right now? Giving away some high life. <laughs> <laughs> I could use one. Uh, 844, give me a number. Call uh, number how seven. About one? For the one <laughs> national championship that Bennett has won to the zero. So call number 10. The one okay. to Bennett. Actually, two. I'm going to go call it number two. The Bennett family has two Final Fours. So we're going to go number two, 844-770-3776. Caller number two gets a case of high life, 844-770-3776. You're listening to Rutledge and Hamilton, presented by Coors Light. Need more of Judgmental Jim? Subscribe to the Rutledge and Hamilton podcast, presented by Revive Restoration, wherever you get your podcasts. You, ra, ra. Hello, Windows and Doors of Wisconsin present your Badger Minute. Here's Alex Strofe. This Badger Minute brought to you by Starry on Bank with three Madison area locations in Middleton, Sun Prairie, and Monona. Starry on Bank is here investing in your community. Start your experience by going to StarryOnBank.com, member FDIC. After eight seasons in Madison, Wisconsin men's basketball director of recruiting and scouting Kyle Blackburn has accepted a job as the head coach at Division II Rockhurst. Blackburn has spent the last four seasons in Madison as the director of recruiting and scouting and spent the four previous seasons as the team's assistant director of basketball operations when he joined the staff in 2016. Blackburn returns to Rockhurst after serving as an assistant coach during the 2015 and 16 season. Blackburn is also the former head coach at Schulzburg High School and is a graduate of Wisconsin Platteville. Get 0% interest for up to 36 months or no down payment, no interest, and no payments for up to 18 months. Book before April 30th at PellaWI.com. Glenn Whipperforth is the president of Kalsher Implement Company, Incorporated. Glenn, you've had copier printers from James Imaging Systems for years. Question, Glenn, is James just a vendor or more like a partner? I would say partner in the fact that they're looking at what we're doing and trying to work with us to make it simple for us. Making it easy, keeping it simple. That's James Imaging Systems Managed Print Services Program. Yes, so we have a monthly contract and then they manage our inventory as far as our toner and equipment for the copier machine. Exactly. All your copier printers bundled under one low monthly invoice from James Imaging Systems. And that includes parts, service, and supplies. And that has its benefits, Glenn. The benefit is that we have the supplies when we need them, and it keeps our business flowing. Make it easy, keep it simple with the Managed Print Services Program from James Imaging Systems. Call 608-221-3457 or visit jamesimaging.com. James Imaging Systems, your local business technology partner. Matt Hamilton here to tell you about my friends at Revive Restoration. Nobody plans for accidents to happen, but when they do, you can count on Revive to be professional, efficient, and detail-oriented as they make things right again. Revive Restoration.
Your Honda gets you everywhere. When it needs service, you need Zimbrick Honda service. Their customer service is second to none, and you can experience it yourself at two convenient Madison locations on Fish Hatchery Road and Grand Canyon Drive. Honda certified technicians handle it all. You can even get flexible payment options. Fix your car now and pay later. Apply online to see your options in seconds with no hard credit check. Make your service appointment online at ZimbrickHonda.com. Zimbrick Honda Service Center on Fish Hatchery Road and Grand Canyon Drive. Part of the Madison community since 1973. Shop Zimbrick Honda. From color-changing Alexandrite to shimmering zircon and everything in between at Chalmers Jewelers, you'll find high-quality, affordable, one-of-a-kind pieces. We source straight from the gem cutters and we manufacture in-house from start to finish. As the manufacturer, we believe in truth and pricing. Never pay more for quality and stunning beautiful jewelry. She's one-of-a-kind and so should her jewelry be. While others may send your jewelry dreams to someone else to make, with us, your dreams become reality with the help of our custom jewelers, with you involved the whole way. With a staff that has over 200 years of combined experience, why buy from a place that marks up jewelry made by the thousands? When you can buy direct from Chalmers for that one-of-a-kind piece that is better quality, often for less. Chalmers Jewelers in and Madison. The High Life Dive Bar of the Week on Rutledge and Hamilton is brought to you by Miller High Life. Celebrate local dives with the champagne of beers. Miller High Life. The High Life Bar of the Week, which means they're going to have $2 High Life's item. Is Baldwin Street Grill, and that is actually not that far away from us here at the uh, Spark Building. 1304 East Washington is Baldwin Street Grill. In fact, we heard that America's favorite Alex, Alex G, was just at Baldwin Street Grill. High reviews. So if you want great beer, most importantly, the high life over there, great food, great environment. Baldwin Street Grill. Uh, Alex, here's what I love about it. It's got, like, it doesn't have... A main sign, it's got, like, one of those white signs that, like, print. Oh, the old-timey ones? No, no, I mean, like, it's like a, what do you call it? Like a plastic sign. Not a plastic sign, but, like, the, <laughs> mater- you know what I mean? The material, like a tarp-type sign. A tarp-type <laughs> Oh, a tarp, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like a banner. I yeah, guess. yeah, yeah, a okay. banner sign. That's how you know it's a good dive bar. Oh, yeah, I know where this place is. I've never been in there, though. If you were curious, though, they don't accept reservations. I was. <laughs> You, you can't be a dive bar if you accept <laughs> reservations, right? Eight four four seven seven zero thirty seven seventy six. How you get into the show? Where you are a stranger only once. The Baldwin Street Grill it says it on their website. All right, let's get to uh, Eric and Greenback. Eric and Greenback. Hey, hey Eric. what's going on, buddy? Yeah, just weighing in on uh, everything that went down today with Wisconsin um, and kind of the direction we're heading. Um, I don't know if you guys touched base earlier, but uh, kind of the other news that didn't get a lot of reporting was uh, Kyle Blackburn, who was our director of recruiting, also left. So while we're trying to recruit kids into the transfer portal without a uh, director of recruiting, it could obviously make things uh, a little bit more difficult, too. Situation normal, but we're fine. We're all fine. Yeah, Black Blackburn going back to what is it, Rockhurst or something like that? It's where he was an yeah, assistant Rockhurst, prior. I think, yeah, uh, D two program. Yeah, he had. Uh, I think he was an assistant there years ago before uh, coming to Wisconsin. Um, Plateau grad too. I, I saw that. Um, yeah. And then the yeah, and then the uh, I guess kind of other thought too with uh, the twenty Bennett situation. Um, yeah, again, I think you guys are both kind of arguing correct points back there um i i think he certainly does bring in um a certain uh certain revenue level as far as to if you kind of think about a lot of the boosters and some of that older money there is uh you know there is a certain charm that the Bennett name definitely has in wisconsin um again though i think the other thing that he might be able to do that he's not able to well, I think he had done in Virginia is just kind of coach, coach Wisconsin, recruit Wisconsin. Cause that's another thing that's been hampering the Badgers program for years is our ability to, uh, our inability to recruit in-state guys. So I, I, as far as kind of bringing someone in that has Wisconsin ties, that could be good. But again, 
at the end of the day, probably a moot point, right? I don't think Greg Gard is going anywhere this year, and there'll be, um, you know, a new list of candidates next year, and hopefully we can get, you know, an up-and-comer if uh, we go in a different direction. Yeah, kind of a fresh start opportunity next year. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate the call. I, I, I would, I would be surprised if they moved off of him this late. Uh, but I was also surprised Hepburn entered the portal this late. And, and, you know, with the Blackburn news, I think Eric does make an interesting point. Greg Gard's doing all the legwork now, so you can't really fire the guy doing all the legwork. At Virginia, uh, Tony Bennett's won 21, 25, and 23 games last three seasons. And he made the tournament how many? Once? Two out of those three. Okay. How'd they do? Same as Wisconsin. Exactly. But more money would be at Wisconsin if Tony Bennett arrived. I think we can agree on that. I, I do agree on that. I, I just don't know that it's as, and I don't a want significant Tony, amount I don't as want Tony it Bennett. It would be, but I don't want Tony Bennett here. I do think that people with money who would give money to the program are stale on Greg Gard, and that's the part that will get him fired more than anything else. That, I think that is the part that maybe I didn't properly sell enough of. I think the no, people— you're too busy interrupting us. It happens. I think, says the person interrupting me, but the I th- <laughs> with, with uh, pointless D17 schools uh, that nobody no cares idea. about. Uh, what I think is that this program has a staleness problem, a problem where the people around it, including the fan base, don't care as, not even say as much, but as there's not a buzz with this team. It wasn't that long ago. Bo Ryan's teams. That was the talk of the town. Like The people in, in Madison mm-hmm. – really gave a crap and were excited about this Badger basketball team. It took almost the entire season with Johnny Davis before people got excited, and by the time they got excited, they were done. Mm -hmm. And there's a case to be made that Johnny Davis is to great guard what uh, Jonathan Taylor was to Paul Christ that extended his career longer than it should have been. That one player lifted your program and when that player left, you couldn't repeat this success because the way that the sport has gone has passed us by. Now, I'm not saying fire guard right now. That I feel like it would be impossible to find a better coach than Greg Guard at this moment. Mm-hmm. So that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is, though, it is very fair to say this program, combined with the middling success on the court and now hemorrhaging players, it's fair to say, what in the hell is going on at the Cole Center? And Greg Gard better fix it. And if he doesn't, he will be gone. Maybe midseason like Paul Christ was. And I think that's realistic. And if you don't think that, you're being purposely obtuse. I think that's that's well my said. take on the program. I think that's well said. Um, just before I know we're running late, so before we get the break, Jim, I'm, I just have a trivia question for you. What do Greg Gard, Bo Ryan, and Dick Bennett all have in common? Uh, I don't know. They all coached at D17 schools that quote unquote nobody else nobody cares about. All, and nobody, all coached in the WIAC. And nobody cares. Uh, nobody but, cares they coached there. Uh, well, when you're comparing Dick Bennett and Bo Ryan and saying that nobody cares, they both won national championships at D3. Yeah, but like, is and that, when Bo to goes in, are you leading with that or are they leading with his two Final Fours at Wisconsin? Uh, I yeah, mean, thank you. This probably is probably leading with what happened first light. now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Since J&K Security Solutions opened in 1987, our attention to detail and customer service have been our strongest assets. I'm President Jeffrey Beckman. We'll always do our best to find the most efficient and cost-effective solution to every job we tackle. Whether it's security for your home or business, installing video surveillance, or being able to control your garage doors from your phone, we can help you feel empowered with simple and user-friendly technology. Let's work together to secure your home or business. JKSecurity.com. Hi, this is Dave Kane. You're listening to Madison's Home of the Bucks, a good karma brand radio station, 100.5 ESPN WTLX, Monona, Madison. Broadcasting live from the Everlight Solar Studio, this is your Metro Kia of Madison Sports Center. Good afternoon, Madison. I'm Ryan Wollersheim, and this is your Sports Center update brought to you by ESPN Wisconsin Draft Night. Watch nights one and two of the draft along with reactions, insights, and analysis from many of your favorite ESPN Wisconsin hosts. ESPN Wisconsin Draft Night streaming the first two nights of the NFL Draft on the ESPN Madison YouTube channel. Also make sure to head over to ESPNWisconsin.com for continuing coverage of what the Green Bay Packers might do at pick number 25 in the NFL Draft. Bill Barnwell had his most recent article with trades for all 32 first round picks within the NFL Draft. 
Head over there, read that read that article, see if the Packers maybe going to be moving up in the first round. But Badgers basketball seems to be heading down in the Big Ten rankings after they lost two of their best players at the transfer portal this offseason. That includes point guard Chucky Hepburn, who entered the portal today, as well as former Badgers guard A.J. Storr, who announced he will be heading to Kansas next season to play for Bill Self's program in, in Lawrence. The former St. John's transfer was the leading scorer for the Badgers as a sophomore last season, averaging 17 points and four rebounds per game. We'll be talking about the Packers and Badgers and much more in the second hour of Rutledge and Strofe starting right now. When breaking news happens, ESPN Madison has it covered. Breaking news on ESPN Madison is presented by Metro Kia of Madison. You got the show, the show, the show, the show. Everybody's ego takes a shot on this show. This is Rutledge and Hamilton with Jim Rutledge and Matt Hamilton. People like me. That's some booty, Jim. Presented by Coors Light on 100.5 ESPN. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> coming to the stage. I'm just not ready to crown his ass. I, I'm I ready to crown him. You're premature. Off premature it. coronation. Yeah, yeah. That's not a comment. <laughs> Even if it was like a quote te- tweet. I like quote teats. Facts don't lie. The next day, he's like, my Achilles feels pain. <laughs> and the dolphin's pregnant. I don't yeah. know what exactly all happened there, but. Broadcasting live from the Everlight Solar Studio with. No idea. Irrelevant. Here's Jim Rutledge. Primetime not managing the clock well. What are you doing, man? <laughs> my bad, guys. The hell, Ryan? <laughs> Sorry, I was yelling too loud. <laughs> yeah. You sound hoarse. This is Rutledge and Hamilton presented by <laughs> Coors Light. Can the Badgers play a full game of horse with the roster at this point? Do they have enough guys? <laughs> they couldn't be able to pick up basketball games. Yeah, they could play a game of knockout. It wouldn't last very long. No lightning? Yeah, no. Uh, I tell you also, they couldn't fill out like the celebrity. I don't know how they'd fare in the Easter Seal celebrity basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> no, they'd still kick all of our, our butts. This year, yes. But some years, like Keaton Ankerville was there. And Brust. Joey and Bruss, like. Like, I feel like if the Badgers played in an alum, maybe that's our next question, 844-770-3776. Could the Final Four Badger basketball team beat this current Badger oh, basketball team? Yes. yes. Because oh Frank's God. still playing, Sam's still playing, Nigel's still playing. Yeah. Bruss still plays pickup pretty Duque? well. I mean, Duguay? Duke? Duque? Du- Duque. Duque? Duque? Yeah, come on. Love Duque. Uh, he's uh, got Bulls ties. Giannis, that's that's like Bulls. He's got what? Bulls ties. So oh, I was okay. a fan of uh, He Duque. was on a bunch of teams in the league. No, he, his league, family, right? I think his dad was the the scout that recruited or that found Tony Kukoc. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a fun little story. I didn't know that tie. Is that uh, what the Duque Badgers? played for the Bulls, though. He played for the uh, Windy City Bulls. That was that surprising because I know they liked yeah. his dad. His dad was a scout there. Uh, so. Duque still playing as well. He's overseas as well. So, yes, I would say yes. Because what would the starting lineup be for the Badgers if the season started today? It would be Kamari McGee. Max Klesmet. Who's playing the three? Steven Krause still there? Yeah, Krause playing the five. I'm trying to go in order. So, Kamari would be running the point. Klesmet would be the two. I mean, honestly, Carter Gilmore would be starting, Car- I think. Carter Gilmore, Nolan, Winter, Crowell, probably your five. Daniel Maybe Freitag, Marco Silver. Is Daniel Freetag going to play Freetag, immediately? Freetag, John Blackwell might be the three. Freetag, I feel like you might want to be start the one. him right away. He'll probably be the one. Yeah, and then Blackwell as the three, maybe. And then you go Winter and Crowell down low. Sure. Woof. Duye's dad, uh, I just <laughs> want to say this out. I want to get this through here. He was actually wrapped up his career. I think he's retired now as special assistant to Bulls general manager Gar Foreman by the end of it, but was a hell of a player in Yugoslavia. But nobody cares about Dick Bennett. Right. But this guy <laughs> cool. played in the NBA. <laughs> but how does this connect back to Michael Jordan, Jim? Yeah, get come that. on. Get that. Well, That's very plan. easy. He was a scout during the Jordan's time. But why does this make Jordan better than LeBron? I think that's obvious. <laughs> it's, it's implied. It's implied. I mean, honestly, that's not a conversation anymore. I, <laughs> at this point, I just bring it up just for uh, just having some fun. Eight four four seven seven zero thirty seven seventy six is how you get into the show. And our first Badger or our first question is: are, Is Badger basketball trending to the bottom of the Big Ten? Sixty one percent of you say yes. We had a couple of texts in there, and I wanted to get to them. Robin Madison said that um, Dick Bennett ruined Sam Oakey. I mean, this with all due respect to Sam Oki. I think Sam Oki was open about this. I believe it was during his playing time. I think Sam Oki had some addiction issues that mm-hmm. ruined Sam Oki. So I think that's unfair to Dick Bennett. Uh, Ryan, the psychedelic. And look, I'm not a Dick Bennett stan by any point. Like, that basketball was fair to watch. Roy Williams saying that Badger basketball set back the, the play of basketball 30 years was actually not that wrong. 
but like I don't care. They have team one, but like that was not a fun team to watch. It was just fun because they won. But that team, like in the regular season, I, they were not good. Like they were, gosh, they were maybe a six or seven seed. Like they were not a high seed. I don't that team, they just caught fire and they were fun to Cinderella. Mm-hmm. But that was not like a high tier basketball team under Dick Bennett. Uh, Ryan our psychedelic advisor chimes in, nailed it. State. Stale is the operative word here for Badger basketball. We need a young, fresh, energetic approach to bring money and excitement to the team. Fully agree with that. Go get Nate Oates. Yeah. Wisconsin uh, ties. Watertown. Not that far away at all. Yeah. 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 Coached at Whitewater. Correct. Oh, nobody cares about those schools, though. Uh, you do. You brought it up earlier. I was just trying to get you excited about it. Cool. No, no, no you I don't. Think, I think so you, you forgot we were me. having that conversation. So you agree with me now? No, of course I agree with you. I knew that. Okay. I just, I just right. figured I'd say he's, he's from okay, here. Okay. Well, I, you were rather than bring up his white water. Can I point out one other thing about Nate Oates? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that uh, Kentucky wanted him? I saw that. And he declined it, right? Exactly. But uh, could so Wisconsin I, get a guy that Kentucky wanted? Yes, just because of his ties. Like I think <laughs> a similar conversation was made last year with Lance Leipold, the head coach of Kansas. Yes. And he turned down. Pretty solid job. He turned on, I guy. believe he was offered Texas A&M this offseason, yeah. and he was possibly considered for Alabama as well. You think yeah. they should bring him into coach basketball? I'm down for it. <laughs> Leipold? <laughs> Is that coach? Might, might bring coach? some money in. He's done all right with the money in Kansas. Football's the second second sport there. You win, money comes in. Like, there's two parts to this, and Luke Fickle knows that he has to win soon or the money's going to dry up. Yeah. There's a very low threshold at Kansas for football, too. Right, but they're the very number two low. sport in men's basketball. I'm just trying to. They might have been the number three sport, honestly. What's number two? <laughs> Women's basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. For a while, though. Um, yeah. Badger, uh, Stin, the Badger, alum char- Badger equipment alum chimes in. Guard is polarizing, but we have not been a cellar dwelling stink pot. Winning is hard, especially in a tournament. If we can salvage this season, he will solidify the fact he's the best man for the job. I hope you're right. I just don't see it. For the record, I was upset when they fired Chris, didn't retain Leonard. Fickle has to prove a lot, and year one was rough. Uh, I think year one was going to be rough regardless. This is a very important year for Luke Fickle, but I think you are purposely putting bias against Fickle to blame him from year one. It could have been better, but I think the program was in dire straits. I think year one showed that the program was in worse shape than we thought it was, and a lot of those players weren't ready to handle the adversity of switching coaches and and, and having to buy in on a whole new program. This is a huge year for Luke Fickle, though, without mm-hmm. a doubt, and the Badgers no program. Right. And I'm not coming out this, and we'll get into that at some other point. We're not going to come out here and say, oh, the Badgers win 10 games. But I do think the Badgers football program will look better and have a slightly better record than they did last year. And what I think they win we'll la- feel was it like seven? Seven and six, final record, including the bowl game. Right. And I think we're going to feel like they're trending in the right direction. Because that bowl game actually just felt like the team that just ran out of gas. They didn't have enough players. They didn't have players. Yeah. But LSU didn't either. But still, LSU's baseline for players is higher. So, like, uh, like it just Wisconsin just looked like a team that knew how to play football and came out and played uh, with some fire. They just didn't have th- enough Sounds ability. Sounds like what might be Wisconsin football going forward for the next few years. I'm not in that bad of shape. For, we'll have to see how it goes. I just don't think the – I understand with all the teams coming into the Big Ten, the Badgers are kind of readjusting here. But this year I still think there's a lot of programs they can outdo. And football, to me, is a lot about the – Players. Still, well, it's not about the, players. It is about the players, but there is a, a toughness. There is a fitting the program. There is just a little bit more of an, an innate – Thing True. That you can't put your finger on. No, again, that doesn't put them at the top of the Big Ten. But I think it could put them like right now. If I was going to bet on the Badgers over the next five years, they're like an eight, nine win team, which isn't great. Like that's what I would bet and on. In the new look Big Ten, that's very good. But that's what. I, but Badger fans are not going to be thrilled at that. But I feel like that's where they're going to be living. They'll be able to pick off some of the the bottom tier teams consistently and then knock off one once in a while. Mm. Surprise them. Mm? They have to prove it. I they don't have to disagree this with you. year. I don't disagree with you. But that's why I feel like it's going to end up. But Badger fans are going to be upset about that. Yeah. Yeah, meanwhile, we're all just, we got people trying to apologize for Badger basketball. Being Where's the standard? Close. Where's the standard for the two? I think it's different. Yeah, I think it's different. But the who lowered the standard for Badger basketball? <laughs> who lowered it for football? Well, uh, Paul Chris, who's fired. So, yeah. Also coached at, uh, didn't he coach at one of those? Paul Chris also brought him to multiple, you know, near six games, won a few of them, actually. Orange Bowl over a school like Miami. Won a Cotton Bowl. Almost got to the playoff. Yeah. Almost won a couple Big Ten championship games. I think we're kind of giving him a rough go. Oh, yeah, rough he's run. got a rough go. Well, I mean, he, the NIL is what ruined yeah, it. That, yeah, it's not. So don't say that he ruined Badger but football. But the last three years, he just completely lost the thread of where college football was going. Mm, fair, but I don't know if many other coaches would have Honestly, done differently. since the second they won that Rose Bowl, the thing went out, or not the Orange Bowl with Hornybrook, was it. It went downhill. 
it did start going downhill, but immediately. I don't, I don't know how much of that's on him and how much of it did is he, just on the Jack Lions Cohen game. and Graham Mertz. Like that was a pretty Jack massive error. Cohen was a, oh because he broke his foot and he couldn't play that whole season. But then they well no and handed then, the job yeah, to Graham. They handed it to him and, and Jack, Jack left. So Jack should they not no take a four star quarterback who was the best recruit in the program just don't history? Hand him the job. No, yeah, yeah. Mm, the job was handed to him. Two things can be true. I think you're both right. And then he would have boop entered the portal if he wasn't handed the job. Because that's the land. But at that Boop. point, at Porta wasn't quite there. You know, it, it was trending that Boop. way, though. It was. It was. But you could have had Jack Cohen. Jack Cohen would have had to sit and then come back and compete for a job his fifth year graduate senior year, and or he could have transferred. It, but maybe he wins He very it. well could have, but I think he made a good choice to leave he and did, go to somewhere with a better opportunity. My understanding is that there was no job for him to win. He was told that before the bowl game because he could have played in that bowl game. But he said, I'm not playing this mm-hmm. bowl game. If I don't have a shot to compete, I'm going to transfer somewhere else. At the time, do you think any of us were thinking that? Like, let's be honest. I'm not the coach of the team. <laughs> I'm not held personally responsible for it. <laughs> they just criticize, criticize, criticize. Pressure, pressure. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Judgmental Jim. Fix it. It's not my job to fix it. You know, the folks at Canopy Wealth Management, though, can't help uh, fix your finances, help you plan for retirement. Reach out to... Uh, whoever you want to at Canopy Wealth Management, I don't want to give a specific person and get them in trouble, but canopy-wealth.com is the website, and you can start by reaching out to that site today. The folks at Canopy Wealth Management take their time to truly get to know and understand the dynamics of you, your values, goals, and plans for your family. You define your goals. They work towards making them happen with their comprehensive financial planning. After all, no family fits in generic mold. Neither should your financial plan. At Canopy, care, competence, and clarity it isn't just a tagline. It's a promise. Go to canopy-wealth.com to get started on your financial journey today. That's canopy-wealth.com. This is Rutledge and Hamilton. We're going to prospect the Packers next. This is Rutledge and Hamilton presented by Coors Light. Watch every show live and for free on the ESPN Madison YouTube channel. Why does Calcier Implement Company Incorporated have several copier printers from James Imaging Systems? President Glenn Whipperfirth. Good people, easy to work with, and local. Talk to me about the James Imaging Systems people. Greg is our service guy. He's been phenomenal to work with. Andrew. Andrew, that's your James sales rep. He's been great to work with as well. James Imaging Systems, local people, and a 100% Wisconsin-owned and managed business technology company. That means a lot to local businesses. It definitely means something to me. That's actually the reason why we're still with them. Glenn, does James Imaging Systems help you keep your customers happy? Happy customers, yes. And you've also been a James customer for years, right? Yes. Happy customers make repeat customers. Be happy. Switch to copy your printers from James Imaging Systems. It's easy to do. Call 608-221-3457 or visit jamesimaging.com. James Imaging Systems, your local business technology partner. Now's the time to make those big spring purchases at Fleet Farm. Husqvarna mowers, Minn Kota trollers, Goodyear tires. Fleet Rewards credit card members can enjoy special financing for three full years on qualifying purchases. So don't wait. There's never been a better time to get everything you need for everyday life at Fleet Farm. 36-month special financing available on in-store purchases of $1,499 or more after discounts made with your Fleet Rewards credit card. Now through May 1st, 2024. Subject to credit approval. Minimum monthly payments required. See customer service for details. Wild Rock Golf in the Wisconsin Dells, a must-play every golf season. Wild Rock Golf features championship golf in the heart of Wisconsin. Wild Rock, a Herdston Fry masterpiece that's cut from the natural beauty of the Wisconsin Dells and offers stunning views from elevated tee boxes. Wild Rock presents spectacular greens that roll fast and true. Wild Rock Golf in the Wisconsin Dells, a unique gem that offers a challenge to avid golfers of all abilities. Book your tee time today for this must-play at wildrockgolf.com, wildrockgolf.com. Life's better with American Family Insurance because our home policies help protect your dreams and come with peace of mind. Save up to 25% by bundling home, auto, and life. American Family Insurance. Get a quote, find an agent at amfam.com. Products not available in every state. Discounts may not apply to all coverages on an auto or home policy. Discounts do not apply to life insurance policies. Visit Amfem.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating companies, American Family Life Insurance Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Great Dane Pub and Brewing Company is a Madison original, brewing award-winning craft beers for nearly 30 years. Whether you're a fan of Pilsners, IPAs, Stouts, or Sours, the Dane's team of brewers always have something new on tap. Or if you're in the mood for a classic, enjoy the German Pilsner or Crop Circle Wheat. For a full tap list, head to one of their locations in Fitchburg, Hilldale, Downtown, or East Madison, or visit GreatDanePub.com. 
Great Dane Pub and Brewing Company, Madison's original brew pub since 1994. There's a good chance if you watch sports, you're getting served information about hormone optimization. What does that even mean? Dr. Nestor Rodriguez at Carver World Health can tell you exactly what hormone optimization means. He will take your blood work and let you know if it's right for you. If you're feeling sluggish, not losing weight like you used to, you're not gaining muscle like you used to, or you just don't feel like yourself in most aspects of your life, go see Dr. Nestor Rodriguez at Carver World Health. In fact, sign up for the six-week experience so you can see everything that Carver World Health has to offer, including hormone optimization. Learn more at carverworldhealth.com. Welcome back to Rutledge and Hamilton, presented by Coors Light on 100.5 ESPN. Brought to you by Metro Kia Madison, Madison's trusted Kia dealership. To Rutledge and Hamilton, Jim Rutledge, Alex Strope with you. We're live from the Everlight Solar Studio. We are presented by Coors Light. Get into the show, 844-770-3776. AC and Tosa chimes in. I'm just glad Glim is a homer. Jim is a homer for all non-football Wisconsin teams. And you know, puts an asterisk there, non-NFL football Wisconsin teams. That People is true. People like me. And uh, also, would Matt Hamilton ever allow us to prospect the Bears? Um, Jamie and Middleton chimes in for those acting like what is happening to Badger Hoops is abnormal. It's not Alabama the Final Four, blah, blah, blah. That, Jamie, that's at the point. It is combined with, and you prove my point, where was Alabama? It's the not winning and losing players is the problem. It is another black mark on the resume or red mark, I guess, if you get a check mark, a bad mark. It's another red mark yeah. on the resume of Great Guard. So it's the two things combined. I you're- just I just further what you're saying, Jim, with this. It is, I don't think we're having this conversation the way we are if Chucky Hepburn doesn't enter the portal today. Without a doubt. Right? I, I think that's the part that's concerning. It's the heartbeat of your team. It is your, it is your captain. It is your floor general. It's different than A.J. Storr, who didn't shock us entering the portal. It, it's, it's not the same with Connor Siegen, who I think we understand is entering the portal. That's the abnormal part of this, is that the guy for your team who has a badger tattooed on his body and has been here, has started every single game he's been healthy for, 103 of them in three years, is the one that entered the portal this late into the process as well. That's what's abnormal about this. And I get your point. Because I think it's 34% of Division One basketball players on the men's side are in the portal right now. It's happening everywhere. But this specific thing is is what's different to me than, than the rest of those programs. I agree. And pushing it. If the Badgers had been a Sweet 16 team, Carr's got a little bit more Cushing. leash. Yeah, yeah a little Say, leash. Because yeah. the last two years, missed the tournament, lost in the first round. Yeah. And they haven't made a Sweet 16 in seven years. So Chucky's part of it. It's a perfect storm. Chucky's part of it. You're also losing a player that people thought Chucky was going to bring in. It's another part of it. And then you have not reaching, I think, what are fair expectations for Badger basketball, which is not make Sweet 16 every year, but I don't know, get to one in seven years and always make the tournament. That hasn't been the case. But we're going to move on for a minute. We're going to do prospecting the Packers. Let's fire it up. Today is big swings. So these are not players that I believe the Packers are going to draft, but. These are players that we think we should take a big swing on. I'll go first because I have my player up. Do you have your scouting report on a player, or do you want me to – like? otherwise, just when you say the name, I'll bring the player up what, off of the ringer. What website are you doing on the ringer? I'm yeah. on ESPN. Okay. I'll cite my source. Don't worry. I did last time. I, I've been doing the ringer every single time. I, I it's didn't, I didn't say you okay. didn't. All right. So, Very and then, Ryan, do you want me to do it for you? I got it. All right. You brought up yesterday. <laughs> you like you didn't, and I said I started with it. You just weren't listening. Uh, you have yours, Ryan, or do you want me to do it for you? I got it. All I right. got it. So – I'm going to go with Roma Dunze, wide receiver, Washington. Oh, so that'd be a trade-up swing. Yes, big swing, trade-up swing. Big ball-winning receiver who makes plays at all three levels, has the speed to make plays deep and the strength to come down with the ball in traffic, shades of Devontae Adams, instinctual playmaking, okay. pro-ready frame, smooth foot- footwork, sure hands. And what I see from him as a guy that – Will is this immediate- you talking or the ringer? This is me now. Okay, gotcha. But I see from him as a guy that will immediately jump to the front of the line, which then slots everyone back a little bit, which is good. There's less projection with him than any other player on the Packers roster as far as receiver. I think you are really uh, – there's a high likelihood you are drafting a guy who will be a legitimate impact number one type receiver year one, which then makes all the other players like Wicks and Heath and even the receivers slot down a little bit, and their development – you have more cushion for one of them to fail because they probably will 
and now you but Roma Dunze is the blue blood prospect and talent at wide receiver that you give Jordan Love and now you pair him with Jordan Love for the next eight years they can develop that relationship they got the Packers well no Super Bowls with Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams but you know what I mean I know what you mean uh two things I love about that number one is you and I are going to agree on the position which I will get to in a second Number two is, you can tell when they write these draft profiles, I've been fascinated by this all week and the verbiage they use, they don't start mixing it up until they get to the 30s and 40s, right? Romo Dunze is viewed as a top 10 pick, so there was nothing weird in his profile. Sure. They didn't have to use any weird verbiage. He's also 6'3", 212, just worth noting that, too. He's a beast. I mean, he's okay. a large, athletic, great route running wide receiver. So this is my, I'm going to go wide receiver as well. So it's interesting you said that. I have two really, but it, it depends on the run on receivers that I think will happen in the middle or later in the round. I think there's going to be a lot of receivers draft in the first round. Um, I think this guy is also gettable at 41, which is the Packers' first of two second round picks. I'm going with Keon Coleman from Florida State. Ooh. Um, I thought he was terrific at Florida State last year. Obviously, they had a great year until their quarterback went down uh, and, and got snubbed from the college football playoff after a perfect season. I, I think Coleman's electric, 6'3", 213, so about the same size as Odunze. He's a little bit slower than Odunze, but he's got great hands. Uh, do you want me to read? Uh, am I supposed to read now? You can. It's up to you. Okay. Coleman's 461, second combine 40 time is a concern. But he grades out as an early round pick based on the tape and performed well in other key tests for receivers in Indianapolis. Let's go! His burst shows up on tape where he's smooth accelerating off the line and after the catch. Coleman has the size yeah. and strength to come down <laughs> with contested catches and break tackles after the catch. He led the ACC in touchdown catches, elevates well, and is a tough matchup in the red zone. That from Steve Wench. Of ESPN.com. I'll add here just other stuff they said off the ringer side of it. Instinctual <laughs> playmaking, sure hands, pro ready frame. Uh, they have him as the 43rd ranked uh, prospect. Shades of what, Allen what Robinson. What do they have? 43rd? Yep. Okay, 36th on ESPN. Shades of Allen Robinson. You going receiver too? Ooh, I'm actually going the opposite, guys. I'm going somebody who covers the receivers. Oh, corner. I want the Packers to get corner in this draft. I don't feel great about the secondary outside of Jair, and I don't know how long Jair's staying around, so they might need a new cornerstone at the position. And if they want a cornerstone, I think they trade up in the first round to get maybe the best defensive player in the draft, Quinn cornerback Quinion Mitchell from I like Toledo. It. I like it. This guy lit it up at the draft as uh, draft combine, as well as the Senior Bowl. He ran a 4-3-3 40-yard dash. He has a 38-inch vertical jump, 10-foot, 2-inch broad. So he's a freak athlete. He, he apparently just blanketed all the receivers at the Senior Bowl earlier this year. And guys, just to cover all our bases, I'll read his scouting profile from NFL.com. Oh. Uh, Mitchell possesses a gumbo of traits with oh. size, strength, hey, and speed that. filling up the pot. He's built like a running back, tackles like a safety, and has the ball skills of a cornerback. <laughs> Mitchell can play in a variety of co coverages. It was the clear-cut top cornerback at the Senior Bowl we're working against the top receivers in practice. Gumbo. When I, you said ball skills, I thought you would be like, has the onions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said you said big ball catcher or something for, for your guy. Whoever yeah. wrote that was obviously just spending way too Drunk. much time down in Mobile, Alabama, eating all the Cajun food right. and just was like, all right, this is my draft prospect. But guys, I just feel like if they want to get a cornerstone guy, they probably have to trade up in the draft for it. Bill Barnwell's article at ESPN.com today said, they could probably trade up to get to the 15th pick. If they get to 15, that puts them ahead of the Eagles, a few other teams who need corners as well. I feel like everybody needs corners this year. That's the problem. And he, like like Lance Erline said, he is the clear-cut top corner, but he sounds and he feels a lot like Jair Alexander. So I would love yeah. it if they could find another cornerstone like that because I just have a feeling Jair won't be here in two years. I'm looking at four different mock drafts on CBSSports.com. 15, 17, 15, 19 for Quinion Mitchell. Yeah, so getting up if into that falls, late teens. And, and to my point earlier, I think there could be a run on receivers before that middle teens. I think there's going to be the top three receivers, Neighbors, Harrison, yep. and Adunze, yep. Jim's guy. And then after that, I think there'll be a big gap. And I think that's where the defensive players are going to start to go, like you said. So... It's, it's going to be fun to see what how it shakes like out. Brian Thomas? Somebody He's, might reach for him. They might reach, but there's so many receivers in this draft, I don't think guys have, teams have to reach. That's a fair point. I think there's fewer defensive, like stalwart defensive players in this draft. And yeah, getting yeah, a guy like that him, that Quinion, could really put the Packers apart. I like that one. I think we've all kind of just jumped into this idea of like, oh, the Packers don't have any needs. 
I, like, I think they need a oh, corner yeah. and a safety. They've got some needs, but I'm talking myself after the signing today. I'm talking myself out of the offensive line drop. Pick. Share who the signing oh, was. Come on. I'm blanking on it. Andre, Andre Dillard. Dillard. Andre Dillard. From thank the you. Eagles. Eagles. Pick. That's Titans. Yeah. Yeah. You know, okay, you know Peace. when it's you tough, have to... But I don't think you're you're feeling horrible about what uh, Rasheed mm. Walker did last year. Mm. Did you know Andre Diller gave up a league high 12 sacks last well, year? He's a depth piece. Yes, I'm aware. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the Walker thing is one that if the Packers see the right value to go up and get a tackle, if one of the top guys fell, Mims, you take yeah. him. Because then you say, well, we have a capable, and I think Walker could end up as a capable guy. And there's a lot of guy, teams in this league that have left tackles that are fine. But if you get the opportunity, and again, the Packers have a preponderance of picks, and it just seems absolutely what was that word preponderance of picks. Okay, wow. and it seems absolutely negligent not to use those picks in a what is viewed as a. I'm, I'm inspired. By I, was, I was just about to say you've been reading your draft profiles, dude. It seems negligent if you have all these picks, and this draft is being viewed as a top-heavy draft, to not use the picks on the back end of it to go up and get someone, and just sitting around waiting to fall to you. It does, the Packers don't need to do that this year. In fact, the Packers, a lot of GMs will tell you this, that like you have drafts where you have a lot of picks, so then other years you can use your picks. Then over, honestly, like GMs, most of them look at draft picks of like, hey, over a three-year window, we want to we want to bring in like 30 players. And out of those 30 players, we want to have 20 guys hit. Well, the Packers hitting on all those players the last two years, having two good drafts, allows them this year, instead of taking the buckshot approach of let's just throw a lot out there, we can make a precise hit and go get someone. And I think it would show the next step as a GM for Goody to have the cojones to go up and get someone. Preponderance. You're welcome. Uh, we're going to throw some stones next. This is Rutledge and Hamilton. We're back Light. This is Rutledge and Hamilton with Jim Rutledge and two-time 2024 National Curling Champion Matt Hamilton on 100.5 ESPN and Wisconsin On Demand. The area's best high school sports coverage is Zimbrick Honda's presentation of Prep Mania. Hey, it's Alex Drove. Join me and the Dean, Dennis Semrau, as we talk all things high school sports this Thursday, April 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. right here on 100.5 ESPN, the ESPN app in Wisconsin On Demand. Zimbrick Honda's Prep Mania is also brought to you by Canopy Wealth Management, Pasquale's Cantina, UW Credit Union, Stoughton Trailers, the GRB Academy, and Stoughton Health. Beautify your entertainment space with Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Hi, this is Gina Della from Pella. Turn your ordinary space into something extraordinary with brand new Pella windows. The luxurious look, sleek design, and custom colors available is guaranteed to give your home the extra pop to entertain and keep you comfortable. At Pella, we see windows differently. We have the highest rated energy efficient products and a complete range of durable, functional, and high quality products that bring out the best of your home. Plus, getting the perfect windows and doors for your home has never been easier. Right now, get 0% interest for up to 36 months or no down payment, no interest, and no payments for up to 18 months if you book before April 30th. That's right, get 0% interest for up to 36 months or no down payment, no interest, and no payments for up to 18 months if you book before April 30th. Take ownership of your living space and make it a place worth living with Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Life has its moments, times to remember and share. Make the most of those special occasions by visiting Goodman's Jewelers at 220 State Street. John Hayes from Goodman's Jewelers. We're here to help you make that perfect selection for your memorable moment. When you think of diamonds, you hear about color, cut, clarity, and caraway. We can help you understand that, but we're equally concerned with earning your trust with the quality of our selection and our service. Goodman'sJewelers.com, in the heart of downtown Madison. Truly a destination worth reaching. Step into nostalgia with the Miller High Life Dive Bar of the Week. Listen to Rutledge and Hamilton every Thursday, and we will let you know where you can enjoy $2 Miller High Lifes. To celebrate our love for dive bars, me and Matt are going to tell you about some of our favorites, featuring one extra special dive bar that will have $2 High Lifes on special for the week. Taste the champagne of beer in its natural environment. A delightfully different dive bar in Wisconsin, like Vin's Missouri Tavern, Baldwin Street Grill, r and Saloon, and Paoli Pub and Grill. Goodman's Jewelers has been providing a sparkle to Madison since 1933. That's a lot of great memories. John Hayes for Goodman's Jewelers. We've been caring for generations of customers, and during that time, our strengths have been trust, service, and selection. 
Those traits are who we are, and that will never change. Goodman's Jewelers, a destination worth reaching. 220 State Street, goodmansjewelers.com. The best is at Goodman's. Transform your home with Ridgetop Exteriors. With over 22 years of service excellence, we specialize in roofing, siding, windows, doors, and gutters. Visit us today at RidgetopExteriors.com. That's RidgetopExteriors.com. Find your trusted, local, affordable partner here at Ridgetop Exteriors. Join the Madison Money Guy, Christian Finfrock, for Retirement Income Strategies, Saturday and Sunday mornings at 7. Get the information you need as you plan for retirement. That's Retirement Income Strategies, Saturday and Sunday mornings at 7. Investment advisory services offer the Retirement Income Strategies and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. You're listening to Rutledge and Hamilton on 100.5 ESPN. Brought to you by Carbon World Health. Tough day for Badger basketball. And those chiming in about a lot of programs losing players, yes, they do. But the Badgers lost, as Alex Strope pointed out, Jamal Alex Strope with you, kind of the heart of their team in Chucky Hepburn today uh, as he enters the transfer portal. And they're coming off of seven straight years of not making the Sweet 16, multiple years of just losing the first game um, or not making the tournament. So the product on the court has not been up to, I think, pretty fair standards. And then you're losing captains and key players. It just looks bad right now. Again, hopefully uh, Badger basketball can turn it around. But we're going to throw some stones. The guys think they have the answers to everything. I'm the best there is. People like me. So it's time to put them to the test. That's some booty, Jim. You know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. This is Throwing Stones, presented by Metro Kia of Madison, Madison's trusted Kia dealership. Yeah, guys, we know that sticks and stones may break our bones, but what is Chucky Hepburn going to do with that Bucky Badger tattoo? <laughs> so that's the first question I want to ask. Strofe, you already brought it up early in the show. Yeah. He has like the kind of the varsity collective Bucky yeah. or the Badger kind yeah. of right on his left bicep. The eyes and the nose of, so that, of the Badger. Yeah. Now, it's kind of easy for him to hide because he has like a pretty large tattoo sleeve on his arm, but... If you're him and you're transferring away from the school, what do you do with the tattoo? Do you get rid of it? Do you keep it? Strofe, I'll go ahead and start with you. No, tattoo you, guy, you, Alex Strofe. you keep it. Yeah, known <laughs> tattoo guy. I have less than Rutledge, but huge tattoo guy. Uh, you have a tattoo, right? Yep. I'm going to get a second one, too. Ooh. Oh, breaking news on ESPN Madison brought to you by Metro Kia Madison. <laughs> cool. Uh, I think Chucky keeps it and just adds whatever school he goes to. Just paints over it? It's a big three years. No, 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 no. Don't paint over it. Keep it. Do one next to it, though. Because just add yeah. whatever school you go to next. Three so years of mural. life. You can, yeah, make it a, like, a, like we have the big mural wall here with all the yep. Wisconsin sports teams. Chucky's going to do that with all of his colleges. If uh, he adds one or two more, we, we will find out together. Jim, yeah, I think if we ask Matt Hamilton, who has tattooed basically his life, if you follow it on his uh, arm and up his shoulder and everything like that, I think that Chucky will end up doing the same thing. And part of his life uh, was playing for the Badgers. And you talked about it earlier. He was a guy who, you know, I guess metaphorically bled Cardinal and White, was a leader on that team. And the Badger program means a lot to him. And three years out of school is not uncommon. And three years starting at a school or playing a lot of minutes, a lot of games at a school is a hell of a career. And I yeah. think that's going to stand out more. So I think it's one of those things where he's going to wear it. And again, I'm just saying Creighton. If he ends up at Creighton, who cares? Hold on. We, yeah. need, we need to ask the important question. Mm. So. Jim, what is your tattoo? Right now, it's an owl. Right now? For I'm FAU? Sorry, my, my, well, he said one tattoo. Yes, an owl. An owl for FAU. And then um, and all, owls are pretty cool. Myth, like the good mythology around an owl. Big Athena how, guy how, over how there. How old were you when you got that tattoo? It is a addendum tattoo. Oh, uh, a what? Excuse me? Uh, it is covering up a different tattoo. Oh, what was the old oh. tattoo? Well, that is between me and my tattoo artist. That's but, Florida Jim. Uh, um, I need to know what it is. Was it a name? No. 
Uh, it was just something stupid. So, anyways, I turned yeah. it into an owl with wings that stretch out. I gotta know what it is. Yeah, yeah. now I'm very cartoon curious. I'm incredibly no, it's curious. Not, it's just stupid. Was uh, it? A, was it a phrase? At least you know, honestly could, could guess it. It was incredibly generic. Was it a mom tattoo? Was no. it like one of those art, like those dude armbands back it, in like the nineties? It's up here. It was like on a, the bicep. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was like a barbed wire thing. Oh, oh no! Way. Were you in a motorcycle gang? No, dude? I just thought it was cool. <laughs> cool. So then I, I got that at twenty at Lacrosse, and then uh, great tattoo artist here, uh, Jesse Stewart, who I'll mention his name because he hooked me up when I got it done, and maybe I'll get another tattoo with him. He was able to cover it up. He does a lot of tattoos for the Badgers, but uh, was able to cover it up, and you would not know it's there. Even if you looked for it, you wouldn't know it's there. Wow. Uh, and actually, shout out to Jesse, and you will not know what my wife's tattoo was. She had a tattoo. It was not a name or anything like that. She wanted to get covered up, and he made a beautiful sunflower out of hers. So, wow. Yeah. Did you guys do that together? She went first, uh, and then um, I was talking to Jesse. He knew the show. Um, this is back. This yeah, is, what show were you hosting at that time? God knows. Uh, <laughs> uh, probably one of Scalzo. Okay. Uh, that would have been... Madison's game night. Okay. And uh, he was talking to me, and then he gave me a deal. My wife was mad that she paid, like, way more for hers than I did for mine. I think mine, even though mine took longer, but, you know, spoils of the job. People like me, uh, even all the way back then. But anyways, like this time around, I want to get, like, some sort of tie-in of, like, my daughters, Rosalie and Magnolia, trying to tie something of a rose and a Magnolia flower together. Oh, that's really cool. So I just have to honestly just go do it. Yeah. Where are you going to put that? Uh, that's what I'm trying to decide. I don't know if I want to do. Uh, oh, come on, come uh, on. Do symmetric yeah. and go like opposite on the left arm. But I think I might do the Hamilton sleeve. So I might just put it like right here, like in the Sneakers, middle. Sneakers now a sleeve. You mm. really are a co-host chameleon. I'm not a co-host chameleon. Reach the nothing ringer. I do with you that I, I uh, that I've taken my way. Uh, I'd have to think about that for a moment. While you think about that, I'll ask the next question here. Uh, so guys, we now know that had the Bucks. Secure the two seed in the Eastern Conference playoffs. They'd be playing the 76ers. The 76ers officially secured the seven seed when they took down the Heat in the play in last night. 105 104. Great game. Jimmy Butler got hurt, unfortunately. But I'm curious what you guys think. I mean, the Bucks were very close to getting the number two seed. Seemed like they didn't try their absolute hardest in the final game of the regular season. So now they're playing the Pacers, who. As you can see, they have some history with earlier this season. Damian Lillard posting on his Instagram story earlier today a sh photo of him wearing NBA in-season tournament shirt, which was the in-season tournament where the Bucks lost to the Pacers. They had a pretty good rivalry with them this season. Guys, do you feel better about the Bucks playing the Pacers in the first round of the playoffs, or would you prefer they played the 76ers? Jim, I'll start with you. Uh, I'll go with Pacers. The 76ers... If, and again, Joel Embiid's health is in question, but they're a really talented team. Nick Nurse is a really good coach, and I'm not saying Indiana isn't, but the Sixers are also battle-tested. And then Joel Embiid is arguably different, but as good of a player as Giannis at, when he's fully healthy. So, no, I don't want any part of that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. It's the Pacers, and it's not particularly close. Without Giannis, how do you stop Joel Embiid? That's the question I'd like to ask. Him being hurt helps, Brooke, honestly. Brooke, well, he's not that hurt. Yeah, he's still Let, pretty hurt. Less hurt than Giannis. He well, looked pretty damn good against whatever the yeah, Bucks thrown out against he, him. I'll he, tell you he that. would look really good. And I know Brooke Lopez is a former Defensive Player of the Year candidate, but he ain't stopped. I mean, he is not a PJ Tucker, right? Yeah, that's not a man-to-man He's a man -to -man PJ Tucker yeah. no. who always gave him fits. So, yeah, it's definitely the Pacers who have fallen off a cliff since they're early. Not off a cliff entirely, but they, they have gone a little bit downhill since they went 5-1 and one or 4-1, and one, whatever it was, against the Bucks in their five-game. Uh, series when Adrian Griffin was still the head coach. So I uh, I would much rather play the Pacers. It's not close. All right. All right. Well, speaking of the state of Indiana, uh, they introduced Kalen Clark at, with the Indiana Fever yesterday, and I'm not bringing up his name, Greg Doyle. We don't need to talk about that guy. I'm He's, not bringing up his name. He was a you weirdo. Was wor well, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, it was a t completely different topic. What were you going to say, Jim? What was worse is his apology column. Oh, the oh dude, it was bad. Did you read it? Yeah. That's it was what so he wanted. Oh, no, don't so read it. I read it. I had to. Pathetic. It's the worst. All right, so we're going to ignore Greg Doyle, and we're going to move on to a different show, the Pat McAfee Show. Now, they had Caitlin Clark on the show yesterday because she was doing the rounds being introduced in Indianapolis, where the Pat McAfee Show is located. They also announced on Pat McAfee yesterday that Bill Belichick is going to be joining them for their fifth annual draft spectacular starting next Thursday. So, guys, I would ask you, Caitlin Clark also said that she'd be a weekly guest on the Pat McAfee Show if they would have her. 
because she's going to be living in Indianapolis. The show's out of Indianapolis. Guys, for Religion Hamilton, who would you rather have as a weekly guest on the show? Bill Belichick or Caitlin Clark? Shof, I'll start with you. Did you go to me first? Because I don't know my answer. Uh, those are This is easy. Those are two great guests. Uh, I'd probably go Clark just because she's really? still doing it. Yeah. I, I just think she's a little bit more compelling these days than Belichick. If he was still the head coach of the Patriots, I might change my answer here. <sighs> Belichick is so dry, and Caitlin Clark's fun. I think Belichick's Belichick more fun. I think he's more fun than he lets on. Yeah, but you have to get it out of him, and I don't think I, I don't think Jim would be capable of that. Oh, no, you don't think I would be <laughs> Jim could get her eyes. Um, no, Caitlin Clark. Yeah. I have no interest. I'm not of the – look, Bill Belichick, great coach. He's the GOAT. I am not of the drinking the Kool-Aid of Bill Belichick that everything he does is awesome. I don't want any – I'm not excited about Belichick moving into media. Like, it's whatever. I'm not into it. I'm not. I don't. I would. I don't take think it'll be long lived. I'll take Kate and Clark every day. Okay. Uh, over uh, Bill Belichick. All right. Well, you guys being a little hard on Bill Belichick, just like Ray's closer Pete Fairbanks was being hard on himself after the game last night. They lost five to four to the Angels. Who? What? I bring Ray, this up. Ray's closer who? Ray's closer Pete Fairbanks, and okay. I bring it up because he, he had a great, a name, <laughs> very much so, very much could have, but. He had a great audio clip after the show of him breaking down his performance. He threw 28 pitches, one inning, three hits, two earned runs, two walks, blew a 4-3 lead in the ninth inning. Here's what he had to say about his performance after the game. Was it just a matter of command, location, selection, anything specific? Uh, no, I thought it generally sucked. <laughs> I didn't think it was a specific suck. I thought it was like an all-encompassing Type of suck. You know, we're gonna try and rectify that. Pete, where do you kind of go from here? Is it looking at tape? Is it going through mechanics? Where do you kind of go from here? You tell me. I've tried that. If you got an answer, I'd love to hear. Just you know, not gonna let it beat me up for uh, you know. I'll maybe give it till ten or right now. We'll give it sixteen minutes of of sulk, and then we'll you know get back on the bump and, and figure it out. Guys, you think Pete's being a little too hard on himself here? A general suck. He's going to give himself 16 minutes to sulk. Jim, how would you handle such a bad performance? Uh, look, I, I'm used to it. No, I, I would say <laughs> that um, that he handled it the right way. Uh, he took ownership of it. He obviously went over the top on it to soften the blow from the reporters in that case. Like, no reporter's going to dig deeper after that. So that was a savvy move. Um, I'm guessing he's a good guy, so people were kind of willing to just let it um, sit there. I, like was he hard on himself? Absolutely. But that's the way athletes have to do it. Of like, yeah, you give yourself a little bit of time. You can be really negative on yourself. You just have to give it a shelf life. So I, I like it. It's like the old, uh, what do you think about the execution of your team? And the coach replies, I'm for it. So like, it's one of those things that. Uh, the execution being executed, you yeah, mean. Yes, the team being executed. So, uh, yeah. I mean. <laughs> You got yeah, the one-liners down right now, dude. What's going on over there? Strop, what do you think about Pete? I, I mean, I think this guy's handling it exactly how you should. The all-encompassing suck. I, that's an amazing line. And then he says, I'm just going to sulk for 16 minutes. And you get minutes. mad at me for referencing minutes. Watergate spy deep throat. What? I said you were just inappropriate. That's all I'm saying. Hey, now. I blame, what's his name? Fairbanks? Pete Fairbanks. Yeah, blame Pete. He's not a real me. person. I uh, yeah, I, I think Pete's handling this perfectly. Just 16 minutes, and then at 10 o'clock, he's like, all right, whatever. It's just another day in the office. I'm back to work tomorrow. You know who else handled throwing stones perfectly today? Jim Rutledge. <laughs> Giving us a deep dive into Florida, Jim. I'm sorry. That, that sent him apart, Strofe. You don't have any tattoos, dude. If you had a tattoo, maybe you could have won. Live a little, Strofe. Yeah. Yeah, Makes but, it, but who, who pressed him on asking about the tattoos? You oh, did. Yeah. yeah fair. We would have never gotten that Got moment some good responses me. out of him. We would have never gotten that moment without True me. Big J over there. Little J I'm energy like, uh, from uh, Strofe there. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like Mr. Doyle. That's little J energy. Yeah, you are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you like, did you sleep much last night? I feel like you're very loopy today. I'm on fire today. I got multiple comp multiple compliments that I've been bringing it all day today. Who, from who? Everyone. Uh, Maddie Hayes, our social media queen, gave her a lot of good insight today. People, She's sitting right there. She just threw up a peace sign. See? She knows. I'm not making it up. People. Like you said me. multiple people. That's one person. Molly Brown. I gave her some good ideas today. Helping the station. Well, Bringing the heat. Whatever. To do people who are always in your corner. Who isn't in my corner?
Me, because I'm not helping you watch the clock. <laughs> what? Oh, it's over there. Yeah. Is this the problem? I said I never watched the clock, and that is true. You just have to. <laughs> get, yeah, guess what? You ear. moved in my seat. You can see the clock this, perfectly from your seat. You know what this is? It's because Matt Hamilton, uh, Ryan gives him a lot of token wins. This is the winner's seat. And winners go to Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. That's where winners go. Go to Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. Go win yourself millions of dollars over at Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. $39 million in jackpots so far this year. Over a million dollars basically every weekend won at Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. Go be a winner. Go to Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. This is Rutledge and Hamilton presented by Coors Light. You're listening to Rutledge and Hamilton, presented by Coors Light. The mountains are blue, and we can prove it. Follow the show on Twitter at Jim and Matt. The biggest names in the basketball world. Dame Dollar Lillard. Having fun and honest conversations. He puts it in the shoe, right? And sets the tone for brothers and sisters and family. Every week, Thanasis Adetokounmpo sits down with special guests on The Analysis Show. Presented by Potawatomi Casino Hotel. And curbless, ready-to-drink cocktails. Thanasis. Find The Analysis Show on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And on YouTube by searching The Analysis Show. Bikers need protection, not just from other drivers, but unfortunately from insurance companies too. We've been fighting for injured bikers and their families for more than 30 years. Call Gruber Law Offices today. One call, that's all. It's ESPN Wisconsin's Brad Norman. NBA fans, listen up. You've got to try Pick 6, the newest fantasy app from DraftKings, an official partner of the NBA. Getting started is simple. Select if a player will have more or less of a certain stat. For example, will a player have more than one rebound? Or will a player have less than three and a half assists? Pick your favorite players and compete for huge cash prizes. Download the new DraftKings Pick 6 app now using code MADISON and take on the competition with your best NBA player picks. Only on DraftKings, pick six with code MADISON. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. 18 plus in most eligible states. Age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. Pick six not available in all states. For up-to-date list of states, visit dkng.co slash pick six states. Void where prohibitive. See terms at pick six.draftkings.com slash promos. You can drive cutting-edge design. 2024 Audis are on the lot and ready for delivery. You can save $7,500 on select Audi EVs with the AFS EV lease bonus. See dealer for details and exclusions. Eligibility is subject to credit approval through Audi Financial Services. Cannot be combined with national customer credit. Offer expires April 30th, 2024. Stop in and test drive today. Check out our website to see our current electric vehicle inventory and our monthly specials. The search for your Audi begins and ends at Zimbrick Audi of Madison, off the Beltline and Rimrock Road. Drive yours today. When it comes to security for your home and family, you want a winner, and we found one when we placed our trust with J&K Security Solutions. This is Greg Gard. Kim and Jeff hit the game-winning shot for us with the Control 4 home technology system. Home or away from our smartphones, we can open the garage door, dim the lights, turn on the TV, as well as arm the security system. That's convenience as well as peace of mind. Let J&K Security Solutions do for your home or business like they've done for us. Call 255-5799 or online at jksecurity.com. ESPN Madison is on Wisconsin Sports. Catch up on anything you missed on the Varsity Podcast on Wisconsin On Demand. Brought to you by Zimbrick Honda, a proud supporter of Wisconsin Badger Athletics. If you're looking to purchase, finance, or service a new or pre-owned Honda, shop local. Part of the Madison community since 1973. You're listening to Rutledge and Hamilton on 100.5 ESPN. Brought to you by Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. We're going to skate to one song, one song only. think the show is over no i was recording badger minutes i was listening for tomorrow <sighs> what you what? do this earlier in the day you gotta do this during our time uh no i didn't have time what is wrong with this person on the tv screen right now uh <laughs> nhl approves coyote sale relocation to salt lake city i assume Team that's the owner play as new franchise new name next season there that you go. is new owner ryan smith was he crying like his he looks like someone beat him up He's this is probably Legend Hamilton presented by Coors Light. So recently. his like nose down through his mouth are <laughs> beet red. One of his eyes looks uh, almost infected red, <laughs> and it looks like maybe he has a cold sore on his face. I don't know. Like you know what he, he looks like? He should have just said no. I'm not going on TV. You know what he looks like? What does he look like? 
A guy who would have a barbed wire tattoo on his bicep. <laughs> He looks nothing like me. Uh, I'm not saying he looks like you, but he looks like the guy who would have a barbed wire tattoo. Yeah, it's Stroh's right move. Yeah. It's Stroh's move, baby. Like, everything he does <laughs> is like infant in a crib. His dance moves earlier were just a little lower, of, like this. And now Push he ups. was excited at this, which is what babies do. Ooh, how big is Alex? So big. Like, that's basically his move. You're the expert. You have the most experience with babies and Alex Stroh. True. <laughs> We'll have to ask Molly Brown because she's got she's currently with yeah. baby and um, yeah. <laughs> if he gave little rattlers, he'd be like, "Oh yeah, baby, right, yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. yeah. Oh, what, a, what a rug dumb, rat over here! What a dumb rug show. Rat, Alex Strove, <laughs> cough right into the mic. There you go. Perfect. Thank you, Alex Strove, uh, new to radio. You. This is Rutledge <laughs> and Hamilton. This, that's a guy who has barbed wire tattoo. Someone's coughing in the radio. Hey cough now. right into the mic. <laughs> Ah, oh, the Ryan, mic's off. If you missed any today, you, not initially. If you missed any today's show, uh, and you want to hear that uh, Alex Strove cough right in the mic, you can listen back. Wisconsin on the Man, Apple, Spotify, any of those great places. Uh, that's brought to you by our good friends at Revive Restoration. Uh, Prime bringing the heat today. You had a good show today, Ryan. Finally back hey. in the swing of things. <laughs> Are you trying to say I was off the past couple of days? You know you were off the fair. last few days. All right, that's, that's fine. Oh. I mean, Matt Hamilton's off for three days, back for a day of like. In groove and then gone. Yeah. I mean, didn't it take Strofe like four days to work over his hangovers? It only took me two. Two day hangover. Two day? Yeah. Two, two day. Two day. All right. But so you, we're know, on the you bounced back. You were rough yesterday. Yeah. You were a little bit like, I don't want to be physically near you. <laughs> you might have something. Fair. And now you see. That was like, two days ago, wasn't it? Two yeah, days it was, ago was the bad day. Yeah. It was two days of it, but it started two days ago. Yeah. All right. We'll be back at it tomorrow. Only an hour and a half of this glorious award winning hey, show. More me coming up next, though. Zimbraconda's Brett Mania. No idea. Irrelevant. Thank you. This is Religion Hamilton presented by Cruise Light. The club at Lac La Belle is the birthplace of golf in Wisconsin with a rich history you will find.